Good morning, folks. Good morning. So I appreciate your patience. Allow me to go down and grab a bottle of water, which I forgot to bring with me. <clears throat> so as a reminder, this is going to be... Actually, before I get into all this, if you're following me on Twitter, just give me a 5x5 five five if the volume is okay. Let me check in here. Thank you, Mel. Sorry, thank you. I, I usually see people coming to the Twitter to tell me the volume is really low. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to do to make it louder except for tell you to turn your device up. I don't know what else to do. Everything I have over here is set to highest volume. So. so I've been mentioning throughout this week that I like the 4104 level, 4104.75 specifically, as an upside draw if we got animated to the upside. So far we've had price come down into our New date opening gap, which is over here. Let me maximize the chart. So this is the close at five o'clock, and then we open up at six. That gap is the new day opening gap. So you want to have that on your charts. It's going to act much like a new week opening gap, and then the opening range gap low, which is where we close when the bell rings at 4 o'clock New York time. That's what this level is here. So it's basically the midpoint or consequent encroachment of the new day opening gap that started last evening my local time. Price rally took out buy side straight back down the consequent encroachment of the new week opening gap. That's actually a typo, isn't it? Now this is not the present new week opening gap, it's an old new week opening gap. And then the opening range gap high, which is the opening price at 9.30. Yesterday I made a mistake and I had that actually set at nine o'clock because I was busy talking so I was trying to have all these things set up before I began my stream. So next week begins what many call Easter. I don't call it Easter. It's, to me it's Passover but I know I'm not Jewish. I get a lot of questions about that but I do observe it. So I'm looking to see if we expand up into that 4104.75. Any animation on the upside takes us into 4115, 4119.5. We've been one-sided all this week since Tuesday. So it'll be interesting to see how they close this trading week going into a holiday week next week. I will not be doing any Twitter, no YouTube, no anything with social media. I'll be completely away from all social media. No emails, no old students, correspondence, nothing. Okay, so um, I'm just resting and I'm celebrating and observing the Passover. So this morning what we're looking for is an opportunity to observe between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock to see if we can get a silver bullet set up. And I'll walk you through it as we enter the 10 o'clock hour. Right now we're just waiting for price to mark time until we get into that hour.
the volume and balance right in here. We're looking at a four minute chart, by the way. It just was toggling through. See where I'm anchored? 930 opening price. That's the opening range gap high. So you have to be careful when you have price action like this where we've already pressed up overnight. We created a run here at the 830 news. We pushed above it with this high. We created another swing high above that one. And now we create another high above that one. So you gotta be real careful on a Friday where the market's been one-sided, even though I like 41.04 and three quarters, we could see some kind of a move lower in here that would be attacking some measure of sell side. Near-term sell side would be right below this low right in here. Looking at dollar index, it looks like we could see a run to 102.25 or sell side resting below that that gives allowance for further upside on ES for a short term risk on scenario. I like how dollar index on the five minute chart, if you use trading view, it's DXY. There's your symbol. Uh, the Sell sign of balance, buy sign of efficiency, the big five minute down close candle at 8.30. We came back up into that at the 9.05 and 9.10 candle. And we have been heavy since then. So trading softer from one point, I'm sorry, 102.40. Sell side resting rest right at around 102.25. That level is what I'm watching to see if we get any further animation. If it's just like goes below it and then rejects it, that's going to be problematic for continuation on the upside for ES this morning. But if we just wash out the 102.25 level and just careens towards the 102.15, 102.10 level, then we could see north of uh, 41.04 on ES. Again, the focus is the setup that forms between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock for a five handle run. Something that I teach my students to start with. Begin there, don't try to hit home runs. And this price action, even though it's respecting levels that I teach, it's a little wonky this morning. Meaning for those people that are not familiar with English slang, it's not really pretty. It's not real nice. This entire week has been uh, a little wonky in my opinion. So if you had a little bit of difficulty this week, it's okay. You're in good company. Most everybody else had the same feeling. While we're waiting for the 10 o'clock hour to, to begin and start hunting our third eye gap setup. There will be a silver bullet. You're probably wondering, what am I going to be doing next week? And you're running bets right now. He's going to do a space. He's going to tweet. <laughs> I won't, and you will lose that bet. I won't even know what's going on. I'm not even going to look at YouTube. I'm not even going to look at any social media whatsoever. I'll be reading, Bible study, and friends and family and 
we're traveling, so we won't be connected to the internet, per se. My cell phone will be off and in my drawer, so I won't have any kind of enticement to look at anything social media. Now, that doesn't remove the TikTok onslaught that my wife likes to show me. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Really? The dollar index is still gravitating towards that 102.25 sell side on the five minute chart. It has a little bit, let me see. It has sell side resting below. 102.10, so if we animate on the downside on dollar index, that could be like uh, a little bit of a injection of strength to the upside for ES getting to that 4104.75 level and how we trade to it and how we trade once we trade it is what I'm watching. those of you are, are wondering where's the 4104.75 level where am I getting that from if you pull up your daily chart for ES M 2023 on trading view and you go to an hourly time for I'm sorry a daily chart I'm sorry I apologize the daily chart of ES on March 6th of 2023 there's a premium wick, it means it's the wick that's above the candle. Split that in half and you'll be able to see that there's consequent encroachment. Let me give you a moment to find it yourself and I'll show you. Don't be lazy and just wait for me to do it. You gotta learn how to do this yourself. <laughs> there's no indicator that plots this stuff down here by the way. I do everything old school. I like everything typed out. and I, I like that. I don't want an indicator to plot that stuff for me. The levels are really written on my... This is, this is the secret, okay? It's a notepad. <laughs> all the levels that I am interested in, all the ones that's noted on this chart here, I have them in numerical format just in the order to, of importance and when I start the day I write down the opening price in relationship to the hierarchy of all these price levels here so at some point you know, once you understand what you're looking for you really don't need a chart you, you can just trade off of quotes coming to you I don't advise you to do that because if you're new you, you don't know what you're doing but when you understand time, you can trade just off of that. Okay, so far dollar index hasn't really made its way into that 102.25 level just yet. Might be wanting to rebalance that little area that's created on the most recent five minute candlestick that we're now forming after. So in other words, that little tiny little space on the 950 five minute candle on the DXY up to the low of the previous candle, the five minute candle on 945 with the low of 102.29. nice to see that small little gap that's still there remain there and then animation to the downside. I'd like to see 102.10 breached and get below 102 for dollar just so you know. I'm not trying to pick the top on ES. I 
think the afternoon session today from 2.30 to 4 will probably be very busy. And we'll probably see a lot of nice price swings. Well, why didn't you live stream that? Because <laughs> I have a wife that tells me that she needs my attention on her and the family at specific times. And she's calling the shots on that. your dollar digging into that one or two twenty five sell side now It's 10.01. Just went underneath the low on that five minute candlestick for sell side on DXY. Did not get it any kind of expansion below it. So that's only one went below it. Uh, very small movement below it. We're back inside that little gap I mentioned. Watch the 102.29 level. One dollar. So far, everything's agreeing on that higher high for the three indices. NASDAQ confirmed the higher high. Dow has confirmed a higher high. So I'll, I'll cycle through those right now so that we can see it. We're on ES right now on a one minute chart. So what we're looking at is the relationship comparatively and respectively with these higher highs here. And we'll look at NASDAQ first. Okay, so you had higher highs there. And the Dow, oops, and higher highs in the Dow. So we haven't had any kind of indication of waning sponsorship across all the three indices. And again, we don't try to pick tops. Now, when I'm looking at price like this, and pretty much this entire week really, see all the give and take back and forth in here? See how it's back and forth, back and forth, but still gravitating towards levels that we can anticipate seeing them traded to, but it doesn't give us a real clean area of this is where I would like to enter. This is a very low risk, high probability entry. When I see price action like this, I refer to it as being spotty, okay? Um, it's a little too messy, it's not precise, it's not allowing for precision, and it may have a hallmark of going to levels that we talk about and what I've been referring to all this week, but just because it goes to that level doesn't mean that it's offered us a, or at least me, let me speak in personal terms, it hasn't offered me a whole lot of precise entry points this week. So. When it's like that, you have to be very patient. Don't demand a whole lot because the market's gonna do what it's gonna do regardless. And if it's not presenting it to you in a manner that is very obvious, where it's one-sided, you can clearly see an inefficiency, you can clearly see a run on stops, and then expect it to go the other direction. I, don't, I haven't seen that much of that this week. So like I said, if you've been studying it, looking at it, or trying to paper trade it or whatever, and you've had adversities, 
that you feel that are not common. It's because of what I'm outlining here. It, it's a, it's been a very difficult week for price delivery. It's real spotty. It's real just messy. Dollar's going to need to make its lower lows in here. It's going to do it. Otherwise, we're going to bang inside the 102.25, 102.41 range. It's five minute chart, respectively. I don't like this. See how you can draw an imaginary trend line, diagonal support? I don't like that at all. When lines look real clean like that, I don't, I don't like that. Meaning that it could easily just spike down in here and upset that smoothness that would be considered diagonal support, which I don't have any faith in. So I already know that this 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock hour is going to be formidable in terms of finding the silver bullet set up. But I'm committed to spend the entire hour with you and outline it as I see it, okay? Do not push the button. <laughs> Don't copy it. Don't try to go in and do something with your live account or your funded account or your challenge that you want to beat your combine. So I'm looking across like forex pairs to see if I can get a better read on risk on risk off. Euro dollar has a little bit of buy side on the five minute chart, just above 108.95. It's got real close to cleaning up that five o'clock in the morning short term high. Pound dollar, it's a bit of a mess on that one. One, I'm oh, sorry, 1.24 even. There's buy side there. So if we can get that 102.25 to get up the ghost on dollar, and those those areas could be traded too. It's not much of a range, admittedly, but that's what I see on the forex front. The Dow looks really, and I'm going to be very careful saying this, but it looks very toppy. looks very like it's run out of steam on the upside. But you got to be careful on days like this because it can still pump up there and usually make it a larger extension to the upside where it just you don't expect a big range move come in and they deliver it. So it kind of just... Railroad you. All right, dollar index trying for that 102.25 level to wash that out more prominently. I don't know what the like the membership level for trading view that you need to have to get two charts side by side. I, I don't know offhand how, what that is because I have the highest form of whatever they offer. So I don't know and I don't get any kind of kickback and I'm not trying to tell you to buy anything from TradingView but it would be advantageous for you to have a dollar index chart and the chart you're watching whatever market that be if it's a forex pair it still works. If it's an indice like ES that we're focusing on that way you can measure real time the relationships of risk on risk off. There we go. We got that washout on the south side we're looking for for dollar index. So really this should be having a run above that uh, 104 on ES. And there 
there's a euro dollar running into the buy side I mentioned. And the cable's still hanging around and trying to do much at all so far. And ES, it looks like it wants to upset that trend line I was talking about. Trend line getting done. read in terms of trying to do an execution let's put it that way so the first question now that we're in the 10 o'clock hour is where is the draw where do we want to see it repriced to because without that we're like a sailboat without a rudder I mean, we don't have any any way of navigation we'll just be at the mercy of the tide of or current and admittedly nothing at the moment really jumps off the chart to me which is one of the reasons why I said moments ago that this is going to be a difficult one for me but that's how it is sometimes so we have that wick on dollar index Watch the wick on a five minute chart. You want to get consequent encroachment on the 3 a.m. candle. So split that in half. We're trading there now. And any animation to the downside gravitates towards 102.10. And then the sell side resting below. Below it. 102.04. So now think about it like this. In all this movement here in price, there's really no inefficiencies in here to operate off of. And each new high has been posting a new high and then pulling back down into the range for no purpose that makes sense to me looking at the chart. And where do you go in? And this is the internal dialogue I'm holding right now with myself. Where do I go in and then frame the risk? Like where would my stop need to be? I can't I can't define it where it's low probability, I'm sorry, high probability, low risk, when everything really is low probability and high risk. So I can't define anything yet. And we still it's still early, it's only thirteen minutes into the ten o'clock hour. So it has to be obvious. It has to be absolutely obvious as the wood it wants to reach for, which Right now, the only liquidity and reason to draw it higher is that consequent encroachment of the daily chart on March 6th. And it doesn't need to go there. I just see that as a potential upside still that has yet to be traded to. If the dollar index, I'm sorry, if the dollar index rejects going lower and has something that's bullish in here that says, no, we're not going to go lower. And we have displacement here lower on ES. Then I would look for an opportunity to draw down into the opening range gap high, which is the opening price. So stripping everything aside, gun to my head, if we can't go higher on ES, okay? So I'm going to pose the argument for looking for a short, not that there is one yet, but if we displace lower and create a fair value gap in here, that could set the stage for a short to whatever fair value gap, if there is one, we don't have it yet, that would trade down into the opening price at 9.30, which is this price right here, 4090.25. See what it's done? Trades down below, trades down below that, trades down below that, no follow through, Nothing in here that's an imbalance. There's no inefficiencies at all. So it's hard to come to a determination of it's obviously going to go higher. It's obviously going to go lower and make an argument that it's one-sided. 
I can't do that and these are my concepts. So I can't do that with what we're looking at here. So the market has to do something in the form of displacement where it just shows like it tips its hand to you. And it hasn't done so yet. So you have to be very patient. And knowing what you're looking for makes it easier to wait. But when you don't know what you're waiting for, you're afraid that something's going to jump off the chart and run away. But you won't be able to see that coming as a new student or a new trader. And that's why new traders chase price. Because they don't know what they're looking for or waiting for. So that this dog pile in on a move that's already underway. And they don't know where to put their stop loss. Or they don't use a stop loss. And any realistic retracement in the initial run will scare them out. And then when they get out of it or get stopped out because they're pushing their stop loss too close to the marketplace, then it will move in their favor and then there they are. They're, they're upset because they didn't know what they're looking for. Their fear of missing out overtakes them. And they're reacting to price, which is what we don't want to be doing. We're anticipating. We're looking for something that we understand is likely to form between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. It needs to be one-sided. It needs to have an obvious reason to go one direction or the other. So far, we've not seen the dollar index continue lower below that 3 a.m. low. We do have a small little city that it's working inside of on the five-minute Dixie or dollar chart. Uh, that candle's the 10.05. So part of this year's mentorship by putting you in these conditions and watching price when it's not easy, it's helpful, even though you may feel like it's counterproductive, it's very helpful to you to get a baseline understanding about what it's like when you don't really want to be trading. These are the environments. These are the conditions. You don't want to push it. But I promise you, if you go back and look at your losing trades or where you loan, you've lost your account, it's when it's like this. And you just you toss in through a mental breakdown and psychological fatigue of just waiting for something to happen. That's what happens when you push that button. What's going to happen if I push the button and enter right here? I might get lucky. And you start trading with a lottery mindset. That's gambling. So it has to make sense. It has to be in the chart clearly one-sided or you don't push a button. And if something happens and the market moves and you weren't part of it, it's okay. It's okay. It moved this, this morning at 8.30 without me. It moved overnight again without me. Most of this entire weekly range, even though I was looking for high prices, it moved without me. I didn't have an area where I could really engage well with it. So it moves without me. You have to give yourself permission to be on the sidelines sometimes when the market moves. You can't be in every price swing. You have to sleep. You have to demand that the market's going to provide, provide you rather a setup that's clean. It has to make sense logically within the context of your model. It has to make sense from a risk standpoint. You have to be able to frame the risk. And arguing the other side of the trade is a difficult task if you can argue both sides which is what we're saying essentially here because it hasn't done anything in this choppiness here it could still go up and hit the 104.75 level which is consequent encouragement of March 6th daily candle premium wick so half of the wick that's what that level is here and I said I would show you that I apologize let me see That's that wick right here. There's March 6th. That wick, when it's above the candle, it's a premium wick. When it's below the candle, yes, I understand it's referred to as a tail, but it's a discount wick. In my vocabulary, that way, when you're hearing me or seeing things referred to on Twitter, that's what I'm talking about. Premium wicks are above the body. 
discount wicks are below the body. So my question to you is this, and, and sincerely think about this, okay? I'm not trying to be facetious. Looking at this price action right here, right now, does anything in this inspire action on your part? And I'm not talking about impatience or gambling, the impulsiveness to just get in there and do it. Because some of you are thinking, I'm probably going to be right about that 4104.75, so why not just buy here and get five handles of a run? Okay? If you want to do that, where are you framing your risk? Where's the stop loss going to be at? Because I don't know where I would be putting that and feel like it's safe and not the static price action that we're seeing back and forth. This is spotty price action to me. Okay, It's just back and forth. It's not trying to get anywhere in a hurry, which is one of the hallmarks. This is a signature to what I'm trying to trade. All the examples, when you see me recording them and, and getting involved in these price moves and pyramiding and building positions up larger, six contracts, three contracts, one contract, building up and then it goes to my targets and it quickly runs down there, you're not seeing that in this price action. And you're hearing me explain why it's not likely to be that type of trade. It's not likely to be that kind of session yet. All that can change in, in, in an instant. All it needs to do is displace. Dollar index has failed to go lower. We're in an area right now where it could revisit the equilibrium of the range that's been formed on dollar's five minute chart. If you look at the high at 910 to the low that was formed at 1010, that range split that in half. The equilibrium of that range, I'll tell you what the Price is in a second here. 102.296. So if it, if it starts to move above that, that's problematic for initial upside for ES. And that means that we could potentially have a AM session in a term high here. A displacement lower that creates a fair value gap. I would feel confident that we would then, at that time, trade to the opening range gap high, which is the 930 opening price. This candle's opening price. So you can watch that right here. See this up here in the upper left-hand corner? O, that's the opening price. On this candle, that opening price is 4090.25. So if dollar can manage to get above 102 point, we'll just call it 102.30. If it starts to move above that, that's problematic on continuation on the upside for ES. We would wait, submit ourselves the time, and wait for a displacement lower. And if there's a fair value gap, that's what I'm looking for, that move. Otherwise, I'm sitting still because it might just want to spike up into that 4104.75. And then I have to wait for more information. This type of price action is what I expect on the week, like next week. That this is this is typical of what I expect during those types of holidays. You might not celebrate it, but uh, a lot of big money does. And you'll probably see some wonky price action next week as well, and you probably might see. Several price action moves that are just amazing. It's okay. They'll be there when I come back. First live stream after today will be April 11th. So no live streams prior to that. Dollar index is just underneath 
that 10230 level, as I mentioned, anything above that, that's problematic for ES going higher. Euro dollars rejecting its 109 big figure. And cable just never joined the party on the upside, so even in this, I don't see anything left to work with for Forex either. Let's cycle through the indices. I guess this is one of those times when people that do live streaming all the time, this is probably where they feel the impulsiveness to feel like they have to do something for their audience. Whereas myself, I don't care if you're bored or you watch the stream and nothing happens because that's the real world. <laughs> okay, You're going to have times when you have a model, when you know what you're looking for. You're just going to wait for the model. That, that, did I just type the same thing, didn't I? Hmm. Talking and doing things on this is something that's outside the scope of uh, my skill set, apparently. <laughs> Can't walk and chew bubble gum. So, yeah, that's ugly, isn't it? Somewhat of an imbalance still in here. We're looking at the Dow, by the way. So one minute chart. It would need to stay above that area there. That's a mitigation block, by the way. To sit still, that is a skill set that is priceless. You can't put a price tag on that. Knowing when to sit still. So dollar index is traded above that equilibrium price point I told you about that would be problematic. So we're watching ES to see if it shuns that 4104 levels for now and wants to go lower. Or does it spike up there and reject it and then reprice lower? There's short-term buy side risk thing right above here. So they could be coming up there, bumping that, and it hit the 4104 and three quarters level, which is consequent encroachment of the wick on March 6th daily candle. British pound versus US dollar has moved lower. 20 handles. 20 pips. <laughs> 20 pips. Apologize. Just in striking distance on that 4104.75 level. is still expanding to the upside so this is in my opinion it's a suspect rally meaning that it's probably just bumping the buy side and then potentially a rejection still give an opportunity for 4104 to be traded to so even though that the market is being very fickle right now fickle meaning that 
It's just not cooperating, allowing really nice, clean price runs and setups. We can see, like I mentioned on the dollar index, how that's likely to pull up. And Forex offered 20 pips on both the euro and cable. ES is just being stubborn still. There's that buy side. They just punched into that. So this is halfway decent so far. If we can break down below that and not get crazy on the downside, we can use this as a breaker. So we would have high, low, higher high, taking out buy side. So these two candles here, we would extend that out in the future as a rectangle. And then you would see it maybe offer resistance there, but it would need to trade below it to do so. Now, if the dollar was to just completely lose where it's at right now and go lower, that 41.19 level on ES, that would be something. We have a buy side here, uh, buy side down, sell side efficiency, shift in market structure, even though 41.04 I like, if we trade through that up here. Uh, this shaded area, by the way, which we probably want. What is that? So the shaded area is a volume imbalance on the daily chart, and this is the March sixth high, daily high. The problem with this one is, is we have the Dow lagging. Which it can keep. Uh, I told you it would need to stay above here if it's going to be bullish. If it trades below it, that would be uh, weak. NASDAQ. Higher. ES. platforms, different rules. <laughs> Off that uh, volume balance and a run on that, so 41.08 and a half, that level right there. Off the volume balance, that's just just underneath the uh, maybe five handles if we, if we were using that volume balance. looking at dollar index to see if it wants to slip hard here lower I 
NASDAQ is leading the way on the upside. ES and Dow are lagging. One zero eight fifty can print. Dollar index is still consolidating. Euro slipping lower. Pound dollar slipping lower. So we have a mixed bag this morning. NASDAQ just ripped up higher. Dow is still failed to make a higher high, respectively. So let's see if we can book that uh, 410850 level before I toggle to a different screen. And dollar still trying to move higher while this is pressing into new highs a day. Not a good thing. cycle through real quick. Lower high. Higher high, leader among the averages. So it's more strong, stronger than uh, the other two, Dow and ES respectively. And here's ES. So ES has hit our 4104.75 level, went above it a little bit. Dollar has not went lower. And Dow is slipping with a lower high. Lots of stops have been trailed up to here now. So we now have sell side resting below there. So imagine overnight longs. They rode out the rally here. This stock would have been trailed below here. And then here. And all of this consolidation in here. They see that as support. So they're going to run their sell side or sell stops resting right below that and hoping to catch you know further upside. So there's lots of liquidity resting right here. I don't need a book map or heat map or whatever that gimmick stuff that other people might use to, to see where liquidity may reside. Uh, you can see it in the narrative of price delivery. It's basically price action 101. You don't need a, a tool to have additional attention spent on. You gotta keep your eye on price action. And if you're looking at anything else that will take your attention away from the open high, low, and close and the delivery of price, you're diluting your attention and your focus. And that small little micro fraction of a distraction is just enough for you to miss the entry and then be upset that you missed your entry. And it completely has a, a horrible effect on the, on the day's performance, even if you were managing to be profitable after that. <clears throat> All right, it's at 10.40. not supporting any of this upside. NASDAQ looks like it wants to go for another higher high. And dollar index is just not helping at all. It's just hanging around at the equilibrium, or above it rather. 
of that five minute viewing range when it's morning session. Apart from the dollar, and I'm sorry, yeah, apart from the dollar not helping much here and the Dow being a laggard, uh, this would be the setup from here up into the 4108 and a half and the volume imbalance supporting it here. So while that's not a fair value gap, that would be supporting it. But I don't have the, the Dow behind me, I don't have the dollar index. So that makes this a very low probability setup, but we'll watch it nonetheless. That's higher high. I'll show you. Higher high there. ES has yet to make that higher high. And Dow, still the laggard. So if you are of the mindset that you just want to look at one chart, and not have any kind of intermarket analysis that would support or negate an idea that you may be looking to participate in. In my opinion, and it's just you know all that it is, it doesn't mean that you know I'm right, but I think that you should always try to weigh out your trade idea with other markets because it'll help filter out opportunities that may not be as high probability. Meaning that in a perfect world, in a symmetrical market as I call it. <clears throat> Excuse me. The uh, the advancement on ES going higher off of the buy side imbalance here and the volume imbalance here would be best supported with a lower dollar. It should be moving lower on it on its five minute chart. The Nasdaq has already shown a willingness to make a higher high. The Dow has not made a higher high, so we would want to see the Dow really try to catch up and go higher, and that would provide more fuel to ES going higher. <clears throat> now right in here, see this little small gap right there? one the next PV array would be the high and the third one is the volume imbalance so with that in mind if this is going to go higher make a higher high like NASDAQ did the Dow would have to climb higher and the volume imbalance down here would be the last line of defense for that idea so you have one PV array two Below that's the volume imbalance. You wouldn't be incorrect if you said the consequent encroachment of the wick too, instead of the volume imbalance. So either or, but I would prefer to see price remain above the volume imbalance if it's going to go higher to 4108 to 4110. And ultimately, if the Dow could turn direction, which it just made a lower advancement. And now rejecting off of. So let's take a quick look at Dow. So it would need to really spring up here. Show willingness to want to go higher. <clears throat> so really short term ultra high frequency trades. I like to look for these types of little moves here and do like this would be a partial and that would be my terminus for a short-term scalp. So this this price like here, 
I would treat that as a fulcrum point, meaning that whatever that movement lower was, it would be added to, and that would give me a standard deviation of negative one. So, I'm watching the Dow here, I apologize. Take a look at the NASDAQ. Down. So, you know, the bodies respected that gap. I know some of you trolls are sitting there thinking, oh, it's going to crash. <laughs> the bodies tell the story. The wicks do the damage. Now, we have another volume imbalance here, and it's above this high. So, in that instance, I would like to see that stay open, not be retreated to, because it would be treated as a breakaway gap even though that the wicks overlapped into the previous candle's body. I'd like to see that stay open, be treated as a breakaway gap, and still try to press into that 4108. It's done so here, it's overlapped, that's fine. So now we have this PB array, the order block, and the gap here. So price would need to stay above that. Can it spike through it and touch the old high? Yes, but we want to see the bodies of the candles stay above this gap. That's order flow. That's how you stay at one side and read order flow. You don't need a ladder, depth of market, DOMs are not necessary. And if it were to break below that and start having the bodies below that, then it's problematic for continual, at least for the initial session right now, it would be problematic on the near term for continuously moving higher. Dollar index is still just hammering around in a small little tight range. And I'm looking at the Forex pairs. Euro dollar has traded up into a sell sign of balance, buy sign of efficiency. That would, in my opinion, would be a short. If you look at your Euro dollar chart, five minute, 1025 candle, that's SIBI, uh, that we've already were, you know, returned back up into. And it's too smooth on the lows at the 10875s for euro dollar. Then you have sell side below 10863 or 64. And Dallas is still not joining the party. <clears throat> See that wick? You need the point of that wick. Consequent encroachment, the open there, and look how it's delivering. ES is the relative strength leader to the upside. NASDAQ is not joining this higher high. See that? It's now made a higher high. While ES has made a higher high. And Dow has yet to make the higher high here. So we're below still, relatively speaking with the high formed at 10 o'clock, 10.01. Whereas in ES and NASDAQ, the 10 o'clock high here has been breached. It 
still no help by uh, the dollar index, which makes these types of trade ideas anemic in my opinion. But it's good study. Now I would want to see it if it's going to continue higher. It can do institutional order flow entry drill, which is just at that rate there. That should be the run higher rate there. If it's going to happen, it's going to do it there. Otherwise, it's going to start moving lower because dollars really higher. Cable just dove lower, euro dollars diving lower. Right off the city I mentioned was a short and dollars raging higher. ES is probably going to lose some ground here. Yeah, dollars raging higher. Let's take a look at DS real quick. So, there you go. That's not a condition that makes easy longs for ES. NASDAQ slipping. So we have SMT divergence with a higher dollar. So let's just play devil's advocate for a moment. Say I was long from the volume of balance. Say I was long off of the high here. And say I didn't take a partial profit or that I didn't take five handles off. Cable just made a lower low. Your dollar is likely to make a lower low with that sell side below that 108.64.63 area as I mentioned a little while ago. Uh, I would have I would have closed the trade with all the things I mentioned. How cable broke lower, euro broke lower, dollar raged higher, and that would keep me from getting stopped out on a trade idea that would be long in here. Just to see how it's important to look at all the other markets because one market's going to be ahead of everything else. So when I'm managing risk on risk off in my analysis, I'm looking at FX pairs, even though I'm not trading them. And I called these moves that you're seeing now lower on the euro and, and cable. But I'm using it as a intermarket, intermarket relationship. So I'm looking at other markets to give me insight as to what I would expect in price action. And we can see these reversals real time in the warning signs that are there in price so that way you're not surprised by it. You're not looking at it thinking, well, why did that just happen? Because you're having to look at other markets. And I see other people that are pretending to be mentors or they'll be highly critical of me. And they'll say, you don't need to do all these things. You don't need to look at the dollar. And just be a one market trader, one, mark, one chart person. You're literally wearing blinders when you do that. Like you have to have a complete view of what all the markets are doing. Because one of those markets are going to be telltale and it, it, like it tips its hand to you. It tips its hand and shows you that it's, now we are really risk on, risk off by watching the dollar index, which is about to make a higher high. So now we have, I would like to see this not fill in that little area here. see that stay open don't don't go up there yet not yet All right, let's play the high risk game. We're gonna suggest that this fair value gap right here, which is 
for any trade to rate. I just backed off. <laughs> I just want to see it just one tick above this candle's high. Which is 104.50. So far we haven't seen that. Well, we saw it match. I want to see it trade to 104.51. That will be institutional order flow entry drill. And we'll get to see it trade down into sell side liquidity. There you go. That's that's the setup that with the institutional order flow entry drill. It's high risk because we haven't had these lows taken out. The stop would be above the high here. Euro and cable are nicely lower. Dollars made a new higher high. NASDAQ is in its fair value gap. So if this is a trade that I would be in for real, I would have the least risk on. I would not be trying to pyramid it. I would not try to do a large position. It'd be something very small and insignificant just to participate in it. reason why I would be considering this at all is because we had such a reaction in cable, euro, even though you're not a forex trader, if you're looking at this kind of market here, we're using it for risk on risk off scenario. Dollar index is still higher. NASDAQ failed to make the higher high with ES. Dow has failed to make the higher high with ES. Dow has been the laggard all morning. And we don't really have the shift in market structure that I would have liked, but I'm just playing on the idea that this is an imbalance. We've already went to a premium and I'm just watching it real time with you. So if I get stopped out, hypothetically, it's okay. It would communicate the idea that I'm telling you these are the environments that I don't want to participate in and it would communicate it effectively why I don't want to do it. And everything in here would suggest that this should go lower. At the very least, it should have at least made an attempt to get to below here. And it hasn't done so yet. The wicks can color outside the lines. That's where I would save the stop. And I would demand that the market would break lower and create another new pattern below this low here. It shouldn't have any bodies outside of it. So that's indicative of a failure. It wouldn't be something I would be comfortable staying with. And I would have to 
anticipate this low being taken out in any fair value gap. That would be considered a setup to run for the sell side liquidity here. So a loss, but less than the limited loss that a stop loss would have been implied by having it. Less than three handles of a hypothetical loss on the smallest position size that would be used by me. Three contracts, in case you're wondering. So now, looking at it and understanding what you would anticipate, what we would want to see, but it doesn't deliver, what do we do? What decisions do we make based on that information? When do you kill it? When do you abort the trade? How is it high, how is it high probability? What is it in terms of low probability? We're not seeing things in alignment. This should have already went lower and it hasn't done so. So if it's being reluctant to do that, you have to demand much more from it. This is that part where I can remember as a 20 year old, I see a setup, I wanna see it uh, pan out. I would engage it. Then it doesn't perform like I want to. And then I would open the stop up larger, give it more room. Now let's just play devil's advocate for a moment and say I was my 20 year old self and I didn't collapse it or abort it at three points negative or just below three points negative handles. And my stop would have been just above here initially, remember? Now let's just say, as my 20 year old self, I would have opened the stop up larger, thinking that, okay, it just, it needs to go back to this old high as resistance. That was my mentality, that was my thinking. So the stop would be elevated up to here, which does what? Offers up more opportunity for, if it's gonna go higher, it's gonna dig into that liquidity that would be above that high. So it would be a larger loss needlessly when it's already communicated to me that it shouldn't be doing what it's doing. The imbalance is here. That's colored in. The bodies here are telling you that it has unfinished business up here. So if you started with a short down here and your stop is at that higher just one tick above it, as I hypothetically outlined, you don't have to sit there and take the full stop. There's a logic behind where you can kill the trade where it's no longer a viable setup because the candle's bodies are doing what's in now would be a full stop out. So you don't need to you don't need to panic. You don't need to be fearful, but you do have to respect the measure of risk. And if you don't see the signatures and price action supporting your idea, you don't waste time and spend mental capital worrying about the trade setup. It's either going to be good or it's not. The trade immediately starts delivering for you or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, that's problematic. Then by having that imbalance framed, you start seeing a body like that. That right there is your first warning sign. And then we open up the next candle and we trade higher than that candle. That's it. You kill it. You don't hold the short from that point on. So what do you do? You wait. You move to the sidelines. And then when it goes higher like that, where it would have been an initial stop out, that would have been a full stop. You feel better about yourself because you've managed risk appropriately and you're not reacting to price. You're reading price. You're letting it tell you the narrative and the story that it had unfinished business above here. Why? Because the imbalance should have kept the bodies inside of it and it was unable to do so. So we're not taken by surprise. It just didn't pan out in a low probability condition. So all these things become much more impactful in your learning so that way you're not guessing. You're not trying to you know, pull things out of thin air and hopefully it pans out for you. And you're not worrying about getting stopped out. We're looking at the stop in relationship to what the price is delivering. And if it's outside these imbalances where we know, based on my concepts, the bodies are not permitted outside of it. The wicks are... But as soon as we have a close outside of it, 
that's indicating that this is probably going to have to be revisited again. And if your stop loss is there on a short and you don't see this, as I outlined in real time, you'll get a, a larger loss when it's not necessary. That's not necessary. Now, there's going to be some times where the market does go against me and it just snaps and runs for the stop. There's nothing you can do about that. That's the reality of trading. You're going to have that. It's a cost of doing business. No one's perfect. You're not going to have 100% strike rate. And this stop has been paid. It's been paid to do its job, protect you from taking larger loss. Well, you still have that responsibility as a trader by watching price action. And this is why it's important to be listening to these boring parts because you now have learned how to manage a stop loss. I purposely talked about how it was low probability and this, we're going to just play devil's advocate and say, okay, now let's just say this is what we see right now. Weakness across FX, strength in dollar, the SMT divergence across the indices. NASDAQ didn't support a higher high when ES has. Let me pull up the, uh, the Dow real quick. So do we have 225? I'm sorry. I'm looking at the highs. 241 and 242. So one, one little point above it. So it did make a higher high there. NASDAQ. Not a higher high. Yes, slightly higher high. So I would want to see this, take this low out. I'm not interested in being long. So I would only look for this run below this low here and any imbalance that creates a fair value gap. I would look for that as a setup to go and sell side liquidity. This imbalance, I'll extend. So anyway, getting back to what I was saying, as soon as we had that closing price here, outside of the imbalance that we would anticipate as real resistance, if the algorithm's allowing that candle to print and close outside of it, that's the warning sign that that stop is not safe and you have time to abort it. Don't waste time worrying about it. Don't second guess it because what's worse? Thinking it's likely to happen and then it runs for your stop and you have a full stop out, whatever the maximum risk was that that trade idea with that stop would have entailed. Or seeing it, understanding that the probabilities have shifted so far away from you and not being in your favor anymore neutralizing the position, taking a very, very small loss, a paper cut, and being correct by limiting the exposure of risk and not letting it take the full stop. The mindset that that provides you is it's easier and it's much more palatable for a trader to take a loss when they're doing it with the idea it's a smaller loss than it would have been if they just would have let their stop loss get hit. Think about your development at up this point right now and what you've been utilizing to trade with and how you've been taking losses. How many times have you been stopped out? How many times have you sat there and knew in your heart that this is probably going to stop you out, but you didn't have the, the gumptions. This is going in, close the trade. I don't want to take a full stop and there's nothing wrong with it. Do it. You have to treat it the same way that I teach you to take partials because partials pay 100% of the time. There's never a partial profit ever that failed to make a profit. If you're in profit and you're taking some of the position that you have off, you're profiting. There's nothing wrong with that. No matter what anybody else tells you, that's a good thing. The same mindset you have to have equally with preserving equity and limiting risk. And the reasons why I teach these PD arrays and order flow and studying real-time tape reading, you'll be able to see when the the positions that you are in and you have defined risk as you should with a stop loss always there's no necessity for you to hold that full stop when you now have indications be, being presented to you in the delivery of price that it's telling you your stop is now in jeopardy so you can say 
okay, with this trade idea, I was looking for it to go lower, knowing it's low probability, but your trades shouldn't be set up in a low probability condition. It should be high probability. But to push the envelope and show you, okay, let's play devil's advocate. We're going to use this as a short idea, and a hypothetical stop would be at the old high there. I taught you exactly when to abort the trade. Exactly when it's no longer viable. You should never feel bad about aborting a trade and preserving a full stop out. But unfortunately, as a new trader, you're resisting that experience by letting your full stop out occur or opening the stop to a larger stop loss, which are both detrimental to your development and longevity as a trader. So you have to have a, a reason to know the trade's no longer viable. Do you have that? If you don't have that, this year you're learning how to do that. These PD arrays, the things I'm teaching you, the imbalances, the liquidity, they have a dance between them. And when they don't agree, do not allow full stop loss. Just close it. I promise you, what you're trying to avoid, which is losses, you want to be comfortable taking small losses and knowing that you did the right thing by taking a smaller loss then allowing it to be a larger full stop out. And you'll feel empowered because of that. All right, so admittedly, this thing looks like it wants to go one more time higher on ES. We might get that 109 level from the volume imbalance that I was showing you earlier. This is a really, really difficult market to trust because the things I lean on for support behind the ideas, they're not, they're not materializing in the other markets, which again defines my version of a low probability. And these types of moves, when they do form, I will not be participants of it. They'll move without me, and it's fine. But getting about. Getting back to the mitigating loss, reducing the overall exposure to risk, uh, that is a paramount issue for your continued success or ever eventual success. In, in the beginning, you're afraid to take that first losing trade. Let's say you get funded. Say you funded a live account. You're going to be so terrified to take that first trade because you don't want it to start off on the wrong foot, a losing trade. So the smallest amount of leverage that you can put on with flip a quarter, if it's heads, you buy. If it's tails, you sell short. Go in and let chance be the first thing. If it's a losing trade, who cares? You didn't make that decision, so you can't feel bad about it. But it just it breaks the ice. That's all it is. It's an icebreaker. If you're so paralyzed with it, just accept the fact that you get some kind of instigation that's outside of your own decision-making. That way you can't be blamed emotionally, psychologically, if it's a losing trade on the first one. So now you just you broke the ice. Now you're in there. If it wins, you can't attribute it to skill because you did something outside of yourself. But that first trade is behind you now. You're not paralyzed like a deer in headlights. But you're trying to avoid losing. As a student that starts learning how to do this, whether it's under me or anywhere else, your number one fear is doing it wrong and losing money. And that's, well, that's something to be mindful of because nobody really wants to go out here and try to lose money. But you can't allow it to paralyze you where you can't make clear decisions about what it is you're doing with risk. Risk has to be assumed. There's no way to do this industry and not assume risk. There's always risk. That's why the disclaimers are always there. That's why you know, you're constantly being bombarded you know, with you can lose more than you have and previous 
experience and you know outcomes and results are not indicative of future results. So you know that subconsciously, and you also know the times when you were looking at price action, it didn't do what you thought it was going to do. And that would have materialized as a losing trade, but you'll filter that out. You'll pretend that that never happened, like you didn't see it, but you really did. And your subconscious knows that. You may be making no mental note of it, but subconsciously, your emotions and your psyche is remembering that as that's something that triggered you, but you're trying to block it out. And then when you start trading with real money, this is the this is the chemistry behind why it's difficult for you. You may do it really, really well in a demo or paper trading. And then when you go to a live account, real risk setting, all the things that you did wrong, not practicing properly, not managing risk, you have not conditioned yourself or desensitized yourself to doing it wrong and not being tore up because of it. You're going to do it wrong. Everybody that's going to ever trade in the future will do it wrong. I will do it wrong. You'll do it wrong. But how much skin is going to come off of that? How much flesh is going to be removed from you? How much equity is it going to consume? You have control over that. So if you look at these things and you use them as milestones for intellect, like a winning trade or a series of winning trades means you're smart. It doesn't mean you're smart. It just means that you made the right decisions at that time under those current circumstances. But the risk has to be defined all the time. And that initial risk is not limited to that's all it's going to be. You can find ways to limit that even less. But you have to look at price action. You can't just marry the idea because you're now in a trade. And you just can't bring yourself to take a losing trade because what happens if I get out of it and it moves in my favor? Well, what happens when you don't listen to the logic I'm teaching you and it smokes you every single time at maximum loss? Every time you offer up risk to the marketplace, it's going to take it. If you're offside, it means you're in the wrong direction of the market and you have stop loss that's allowing them to take that. You are liquidity and they will consume you. So... When I teach price action, it's important to note that these rules are there for you to learn from and also to trust over time. But you can't trust it unless you're in here doing these exercises where you're watching it real time. And not being afraid of it, not painting in your favor. You need to experience that. How are you going to react to that? And in journal that. Are you, are you frustrated because even though you were just tape reading it, it didn't pan out. And how does it make you feel? What's your chemistry like at that moment? Are you hopped up and, and you're just angry? Now you want to vent? Do you want to go online and complain? Do you doubt the concepts? Do you doubt yourself ever learning how to do this because of that? All those things. There's our 109.50 level. And dollar index is still hanging around near its highs. So now I go back to that 20-year-old ICT, right? Remember, I, was, I would have opened my stop up larger. That's right there would have been a larger loss, not reading what I've learned later in life to tell me that this is not going to be a good idea. So kill it before it gets there. So how can one, how can someone look at that and think that's not a good idea to learn? Books don't teach that. Here's a stop. Accept the risks. If you get stopped out, okay, trade your plan, plan your trade, and stick to your game plan. Well, the game plan is not to lose as much money. And if you have a way, a mechanism that helps you limit that, then you should do it. So I do believe these mugs want to take this up to... Well, 41.12, 41.13, that's two standard deviations on this swing here. I'm going to show you do you see how the uh, 19 level which is negative three and a half on this price swing is inside that shaded area which is the daily volume and balance and the 41.18 and a half just falls short of it 
there's a lot of things converging around that daily volume and balance. So at this point, as long as we stay above this here into the afternoon, this is where I think we'll go. The only thing that changes that is trading below this low here. So now I framed out the afternoon bias for you and what would be necessary for those things to be true for me as an as an analyst. So I forced myself into a condition that is not low probability. I framed the arguments against it, and I'll show you real quick again. Here is the NASDAQ. Lower high. This one here, you can trade this one to catch up with what the ES has done. So let's just say hypothetically, you would have been right there at that candles open. That would be your long entry, okay? The idea is that that's an order block. You can trade inside of the range of that candle. You don't need it to go away and come back. If you're expecting it to expand inside that candle on the candle that's painting, like when this was forming, you can be a long entry there. By doing that, or not, not, not by doing it, but by understanding that, then you can go back and look at my other examples when I'm trading live and you see me doing executions. Then I'm noting the candle that it's the order block. You're looking at that thinking, why did you enter there? Because you're inside of the order block. I'm anticipating that change in state of delivery, but the opening price, you don't need to come back because it might not do that. Especially since we have ES doing what? Expanding higher, reaching for the, hang on one second, 41.19 and a half, that high on March 6th. Okay, so right away from the opening price on this candle at 184 even, that would be your hypothetical entry as was trading right here. and now we're at uh, most likely 200 so 16 ticks almost I haven't quite printed it yet Not that I'm a NASDAQ trader, obviously I can trade it, but uh, that would be the equivalent of what would be an ES run. Using this six sister approach, okay, and I'll say it again, the SICK, S-I-C-K, sister approach, where you see price moving in ES. This one's leading. So you go back to looking at the, it went to our 13 level, I mentioned it a moment ago. There's five handles there, but we're going to go back to NASDAQ because that was the one I just gave you live. This one here hasn't taken out that high yet. Let me show you. Okay, so while we're in this candle, this black candle here, that down close candle is an order block. At the opening price, when we were trading down here, go back and watch the recording, you'll see it's like this. You'd be hypothetically going long there. I said, okay, you can go long here and use this one because this is market that's going to try to catch up with ES, meaning what? ES has done this already. It's already made the higher high. This high here, that high is this high here on NASDAQ. That's this high. And right here, it hadn't taken that high out yet. So this is called the sick sister approach where Everything is pushing higher. This pair, or this market rather, it can be done in Forex, by the way. 
then you could use it like say for instance this is the British pound and say the ES is your dollar same thing applied to Forex one's already moved so by sympathy this market will want to catch up with and erase the SMT divergence that was being there so live entering here with the expectation it would catch up and move in sympathy with what the ES has done think about what we just did I gave you devil's advocates in a situation where I already knew it was low probability I framed the fair value gap I told you where the hypothetical stop loss would be and then it traded outside of that fair value gap and it closed with its body on ES and I said okay the next candle it traded higher than the next candle that were just formed let me go back to ES so that way you know what I'm talking about this candle was the first warning sign that that stop would have been in jeopardy. As soon as this candle opened and traded above this high, that's it. You're done. You kill the trade. It's over. That loss that was now small has to be mitigated. We're watching price deliver here. It wants to gravitate to the 41.19 level, as I indicated by having all the confluences and that volume imbalance up here. So if that's true, in the NASDAQ at the time when we were looking at it, on this candle right there, right here, inside of the range of that down close candle, you can be a buyer. And I gave you the opening price as a hypothetical entry. That was your fill. Okay, if you want to use the high of that candle to be even more fair, your fill would be 84.50. Okay, 84.50. And we traded to a high of 98 so almost 15 uh, ticks so the loss that would have been reduced by protecting the full stop out in ES would have been completely eradicated with this move here in NASDAQ using the six sister approach where you're using the market that has yet to catch up with the one that's leading and many times I've used this in Forex and you can see now how it's used real time over here with the ES and NASDAQ. Now because we had a higher high here, this imbalance right here, this would need to be supported. So price would need to have no willingness to close a body below that. It can wick through it and get into this little imbalance, but I want to see the body close inside this or above it. Otherwise, it's probably done for the morning and we'll go into lunch hour. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't going to miss doing this next week. <laughs> Actually, I'm enjoying it. Never thought you could learn so much without having to make money, right? This is how you get there. You got to remove all the concern about losing money and making money. Learn to read price action. There's so much that you don't know that's required to be profitable consistently. So we'll come back to this and let this one cook a little bit, but I, I don't want to see a closing price. Let me change my setting on my monitor here so I can watch it. In case it does, I can mention it to you live and not have to have that on the screen. Okay. Let's go back to ES. All right, so we have order block. So when we look at order block, it's mean threshold, which is half of the, the range. So I'm just going to eyeball it. This is what I usually do most of the time anyway. So I'm looking at that level right there. Okay, that level plus we have a volume imbalance. And the fair value gap. So there's your three PD arrays. We don't want to see any closing body below mean threshold. Below 
long as it doesn't do that, we look for 4119, 411950. Not for a trade, because we're too far in the premium now. We're too far up near the target. So because we're in a change of the session. Now, folks, listen. This is one of those things that you want to be writing down. We don't use this as an entry. This would be the idea that assuming that we're long, we're watching and managing the position. We want to see does the price continuously give us the signatures that we would look for for delivering price in our direction. So this, these three, these three premium, I'm sorry, three discount arrays are inside of the premium range right before we get to our target. So if this is our target up here and the inception of the move is down here in the volume imbalance, we're in the upper portion of it. So we don't want to add to anything. We don't pyramid in that portion. So we have to just manage the trade idea. And now we have one, two, in the volume, I'm sorry, the fair value gap here that's already traded into, now we're in the volume imbalance. And in the mean threshold of the order block, that has to be supported to price. If it trades and closes a body below that, that's problematic. Then you have to take something off the trade, reduce the leverage that you have open. And that's the only time I give permission to a student to take something off when the trade's moving against you while still being in profit. So in other words, you're, you're having open profits erode as it's going down in here. But just like I was teaching a little while ago about when you want to kill the trade or abort it, when it no longer makes sense, you're closing the trade before it hits your stop, but you're closing the trade while it's taking more from you. But you're limit, limiting how much it is. Well, in this case, it's taking open profits that's unrealized while it's retracing against you if you're hypothetically long back here or in here. So you can't look at it as, well, I can't take a partial off now because I'm doing it when it's going against me. But you have to do that if it closes below the mean threshold of this order block. Because it might be indicating to you what? It's going to come back on your stop, which may be trailed. It may not be trailed. Regardless, you want to reduce the leverage and reduce the exposure to risk. Because it's indicating that we are possibly either consolidating or retracing. And it's Friday, and we're transitioning from the morning session into what? The lunch hour, where stops usually get rolled against. In other words, who's been making money this morning? The longs. So where's their stop loss? During the lunch hour, or just after it, the typical performance in prices, it usually rolls against the liquidity that was raised up during the morning move higher. And either it goes for them and continues lower, or it goes against it, hits that liquidity and then continues going higher. Either way, it's likely to run against the sell side because we've seen delivery on the upside all morning. Does that make sense? The fact that we don't want to be buying up here in a premium relative to our target, we're using discount arrays to filter out the willingness of price. Does it want to go higher? Does it keep giving us indications that it wants to go higher? I use three PD arrays to do that. The most immediate PD array relative to market price, which is right now where we are ahead, right here, the volume imbalance, the fair value gap, and the mean threshold of that down close candle, which is the order block. That's the last line of defense. So far, we're seeing short term support offered by the volume imbalance. Just not doing too much in here. I would have loved to learn how to abort a trade and not let my stop loss get hit when I was 20 years old. These are things that I wanted to find in books when I was buying them. Teach me how to do that. Teach me when the trade's no longer good. Books never talk about that, and it's very frustrating, especially as a new trader. You, know, you, you trust the authors that wrote these things and then because you only have the get me into a trade ideas given to you, you know, which is the least important thing, the understanding of what makes a trade less probable. When do you get into a trade that looks high probability and when does it change from high probability to it's not likely to pan out? 
what what are those factors? What are those things that leads to that occurring? So that way you as a trader can use that analysis concept to mitigate unnecessary stop outs at full risk or abort the trade before it turns into a losing trade. Those those topics they're just they're just not available. And I, it was a very serious point of frustration for me. So I had to go in here and just make up my own rules as I went. What do I do? How did I lose? What caused me to go into a downward spiral and caused me to blow my account? What were those things I was thinking about? What was I fearful of? What was I overconfident about? But then price told me that wasn't likely. What were those things that keep happening? That's, that's what I did. And that's the language I'm teaching you. All those core content lessons from my private mentorship, that's the language. That's not mentorship. This, what I'm doing with you right here, that's mentoring. Now imagine you have been waiting for me to do a mentorship and you paid. You're in there. And you're watching something like this. As a new person, you're thinking, you should be telling me to get in good trades. Like it's a signal service. No. I'm teaching you how to read price so that way you can do this on your own and navigate it and not feel the tug of war, the emotional and psychological impacts of being right or wrong, being confused, needing to wait for more information. All of that brings to the table as a trader. And knowing what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to think, how you're supposed to react to what you're seeing in price action as it relates to you as the trader, not reacting to price for trades. You have to make the reaction to what the indications of these price movements are telling you. You can't stick with a trade when I'm teaching you the signatures are telling you it's no longer good. If it's doing that, it's indicating to you that it's problematic now. It's not likely to pan out. So what do you do? You either abort the trade or take half off. That was, a, that was something for your journal, by the way. It's not the first time I mentioned it. But when you have three PD arrays break that were supposed to be supportive for your trade, if they break, that's the clearest indication that you're probably in a reversal and you just don't have the experience yet to see it. And there's going to be times when you do that and it turns around and keeps going in your favor. But you don't have the experience to know that's going to occur, which is the reason why I give that rule-based idea to my students. In the early stages, you don't have the experience, which is something that has to be acquired on your own. I can't write a book. I can't do a video. Nobody else can do it either that gives you that experience. That experience has to be earned. You work for it. And a lot of lazy students came to me and would see things like, this is how I was teaching. This is how I was doing mentorship. I was talking about things and making you understand this is what it's going to feel like to be doing it. And sometimes the price isn't going to do what you want it to do. How are you going to perform as the trader? What are you going to do with that? How are you going to manage the risk? How are you going to stay with the trade, if at all? What are those defining moments in price action so that way you're not caught off guard? You're not surprised. So that way you're relaxed. You're just listening to what these candlesticks are telling you. The only time that you should be shocked or taken back is if some violent thing comes in where the market just does some crazy ass up down move something you know some war event some kind of terrorist attack that type of thing where nobody can see that coming and then boom there's all kinds of shock and awe in price action you can't avoid that nobody can that's the inherent risks of trading and your stop loss might not even do its job in those instances you know that that's likely to happen when you sign up and start with a brokerage whether you do it with a funded account, you know, I don't know what the risk disclaimers are. I don't even think there is any risk disclaimers you sign for that. I think it's just pay and then <laughs> you're in there, I guess. I don't know. But when you open up with a regulated broker, you're signing documents stating that, you know, liquidity may not be there for you. And you may lose more than you have. Meaning what you have in your account balance and also what you have at risk per stop loss. That's a scary thing when you really take consideration to what that means and we're in these black swan events right now where or not events but in a climate where a black swan event can happen 
something unforeseen by the general public comes out and, and attack. You know, think of like September 11th. That occurred before the market opened up that day. If it would have happened during the market hours, that would have caused all kinds of fluctuations. Maybe not the first plane hidden, but the second plane, boom, that would have been obvious because that's I watched that second one hit live. And I was taken back. Like I was frozen in fear, standing right in my living room. And I, I couldn't believe what I just watched. That would have caused all kinds of chaos in the marketplace. Like it would have it would have been amazing to see it. But all these things happened before the market opened up. And they kept the market closed for several days. So barring those types of things, we're not surprised. We're not surprised, we're not shocked, we're not scared, we're not overreacting to a price move. We're reading price. We're just watching it. And it's gonna either tell you a story that makes sense for you to position yourself and assume risk or not. Or once you're in it and you have assumed risk, it's gonna tell you this is no longer something you should be a part of. Take half of it, if you still feel convictions to hold on to it, take half of it off. That way, even if it does run on you and take your stop loss, you did not give it everything that you made available to in terms of taking a full stop out. But in the beginning, as a new student, that doesn't make any sense because you got into this to make money, not get half the position off because what if you're wrong and it goes in your favor? And I listen to this dumb rule that ICT is talking about. Hello. The chances of you knowing when that's true and when it's not true as a new trader is next to zero. So I've built in with this language of teaching how to reprice action, I've taught my students to look for these protocols and follow them systematically, unattached to the outcome of the trade. You have to have these rule-based ideas because if you don't, you will react to price. You will get scared out of the little fluctuations that occur. It'll change your entire mind and scope of what you think the price is going to do for that particular setting, that session, that day. And it's probably one minute candle that changed your whole view because you don't have the experience reading price. You haven't been here before. And you can't say, well, I watched a couple of your videos and I looked at last week I saw price for about 20 minutes, two times that week. So I got experience. <laughs> That's the argument some of my paid students would give me. I wrote some notes down. Look at my pages. It's, t it's 10 pages of useless information. Those things, they're not the heavy hitting things. The things, the things I'm talking about in this live session, they're paramount. But they're not sexy topics. They're not something that, if I made a video entitled it that way, that would be one of the least viewed videos in my entire library on that channel. Why? Because it's talking about a topic that's not sexy. You would, you would be watching, if I, I almost had been tempted to do this, do a series of videos titled Amazing Profit Strategy, High Rate Bank Strategy. I bet you that would be viral. <laughs> I'd have 100,000 views in one day. In one day. Not the typical 55 to 60,000 views that I get. But these are the lessons that someone that's been doing it for a long time has learned that has guided me into the position where I am now. I have the experience that I can convey it before it happens. I can see when the market's going to be difficult for me. I can anticipate when that's going to be. And that's a, a skill set that you want to acquire. But you acquire it by tape reading, not taking trades and studying price. Allowing these candlesticks to give you the experience that you're looking for. But most people don't want to do that because they want to get right out there and start making money. They want to get withdrawals, do their funded account stuff and, and be able to show their certificates and stuff. You're doing it for the wrong reasons. You're doing all that stuff for the wrong reasons, which is exactly what my son's doing right now. He's trying to rush it. He wants to be able to say, look at this. So you're trading with a certificate as the goal versus learning how to trade, be highly precise, be selective, highly selective of your setups, and stick to a model that's within the context of present 
order flow? Is it bullish or is it bearish? And operate under those pretenses only. Not, I want to get this certificate. I want to be able to say I passed this funded challenge. Think of, is that you? Are you doing this for all the wrong reasons? Because I promise you, you probably are. Instead of saying, I want to be very precise about what I'm doing. Calculated. Nothing's going to bother me. I want to be completely bored by what I'm looking at and anticipate these things. And if I can't see them coming, I'm not interested. Because if you're going to react to it, then, well, you're going to be at the mercy of your emotions and whatever the result has been on your last trade. That's going to be the deciding factor of how you're going to think and feel when you're in your next trade. And if it was unprofitable or you had to close it with a a smaller loss and protect your stop loss. That's not going to feel good for the next trade. You're going to be second guessing yourself, second guessing the concepts, the day, the model, everything. And they're going to be perfect little distractions, perfect little excuses to say, it wasn't my fault. It was something outside of me. And you have to own all that stuff. You have to be responsible about everything you're doing. All the ideas. No one's giving you the idea to push the button. No one's forcing you to collapse the trade. But you have to have rules and ideas that help you manage those decisions. Because when these markets are moving fast, and this ain't a fast market, this is it's like watching paint dry and grass grow. I, I, I don't like these conditions. I don't like it. I'm used to waiting for environments that are very quick, very sudden movements. And I want to trade in those environments. But to properly mentor you, you have to be here seeing this. You have to have your nose in the charts, feeling like you can be doing something else better right now. Uh, I'll watch this. I'll watch this video later on when I have extra time. You're going to fail. I promise you, you're going to fail because you're going to have so much hope built up around the hype that's my concepts right now. Everybody's talking about it and using it and it's in YouTube everywhere. And I'm honored. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm honored by that. But too many times, it's this hype train around the idea, but not knowing the concepts and logic that makes it even work. That's why I'm offended when I see people pretend they really know what they're talking about. They don't. They absolutely have no idea what they're talking about. And you end up doing more harm to the people that would be learning this properly. And they close their mind to the whole idea that it's useful information. Because you are talking about something that you don't fully understand. And your, your idea about what you think you've understood by watching my video or watching me talk about something. And you want to dilute it because the attention span of most people in trading is the attention span of a gnat. I'm sorry, but this can't be learned through TikTok. Okay? Give me 30 second viral little pieces of information. That's all I need. Get to the point. The point is, is you're going to fail. If that's your mindset, that's your mentality, you're going to fail. I promise you, I guarantee you, you're going to fail. Absolutely guaranteed it's going to happen. Because you're trying to do something. Shortcuts. And shortcuts don't exist in this. It doesn't work like that. It's just like weight training and dieting and doing anything else worth doing. It's going to take time. It's going to be more time than you thought it was going to be. And you have to be disciplined. You have to be responsible. And that means following rules. And inherently, human beings don't like to follow rules. And it was not easy for me to do that either. I had to come up with these rules. And I had to power through the times that I didn't want to listen. And I still blew that account. Knowing that the rules that I did not listen, that I had already put in place, I said, no, nah, I'm going to think outside the box here. And wreck. Those are painful lessons, and they're needless lessons to go through. You don't have to have that experience. If you listen to me, you, you can spare yourself all that and have all the upside potential learning curve minimized by not putting a time limit on, I have to understand this by this much time. But ICT, you're scaring the hell out of me with all this stuff you're talking about that's coming. You can't change it. You can't speed it up to be prepared for it. You have to do these things 
every day. And over time, it'll condition you and you'll see it. You'll understand more. Yeah, 4119, 41.1950. That looks like it's the doable level for today. Dollar index is slipping off. We're just trading at that 102.36 level. That's that fair value gap I mentioned earlier in the live stream. It's trading up here and I would use it as a sell, a targeting the sell side below here and here. So go back and watch that video. You can go back and look at the logic in here, look through your time frames, and you'll see that the dollar index was correcting higher on this that was delivering in cable. Similar. So I, 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 this one here, I, I didn't like this one so much because there's a lot of this back and forth stuff. But we had that swing low here, breached, fair value gap, displacement to sell side. So the silver bullet trade is here for cable, and it's here for euro dollar. Here's the imbalance I mentioned. And here's the return back to it at 1040. Sell off, sell side. Go back and listen to the recording. This is the first target, and then down here. So that's all in this live stream, all given to you live. ES has been a bit of a bitch, and it wants to get up here. <laughs> so you can't fight these kind of moves. It's frustrating. So you have to either submit to it or don't trade. Go back down to four minute, three, two, one. So you can see how the volume imbalance in here supported price. The fair value gap also supported price, and we didn't need to come back down into the order block. So we're going into the noon hour. Most time I want to see it expand up and just bang that 41.19 level. And that will be a closure for today for me. Now south side has moved. Volume and balance right here. This is boring ICT. Then you're on the right track. You're on the right track. Because you will not be able to do this on your own until it's boring. You're not going to be influenced by the outcome, the potential profitability, or potential losing. You're indifferent to the outcome. That's the right mindset. Every time you put a trade on, it's an experiment. You're observing, does it do what you think it should do? And you observe and you submit to the time that it takes for that to occur. All right, so we had a higher high here going into the lunch hour after consolidation. So this is where you want to go through cycling through your indices. Lower high, that's problematic. NASDAQ.
they had a higher high, but I would have preferred to see this stay in here. Remember I was telling you that? I would like to see the bodies stay inside that. So it went lower, shaded down to an order block in this gap here, but I would have rather seen that stay inside here. See this volume and balance here? We want to see price respect that. It can wick down into this one, but not close a body below it now. This one here. So we have to do this. Change the color of that one. So I don't have these drawn on my chart, obviously. I mean, this is very distracting for me to teach you like this, but you need these visual aids to see what I'm looking at, where my attention is. Over time, you won't have them on your chart either. But in the beginning, it's important for you to note them because you're going to log them. And having examples like this, referring back to old moves where you've watched this and screenshot it and all these instances where price does these things I'm teaching you that you should respect and how they should deliver by having lots of examples of them you will feel much more confident when you're watching real-time price action because your subconscious remembers all the things that you're celebrating as experiences in your journal so you want to make that journal very high energy positive all the time because it means it's going to mean something to you just like when you buy your new car and when you drive off the lot, you think you have bought the car everybody else now owns. When you like the car, yeah. But now because you bought it, you've anchored it to something much more emotional to you. It's meaningful to you. So you want to treat all of the things in your journal much in the same way. You want to make it a positive experience. So everything you look at in there is going to be keying up your reticular activating system. And that means that your, your eye, when you're watching real-time price action, you'll see these things real-time. Whereas right now, you may not have noticed the volume imbalances. You may not have noticed you know, the fair value gaps that I'm pulling out. But you're seeing them done real time. And you're watching the reaction in price afterwards. So we're anticipating. We're not reacting to price. We're anticipating what price is going to do. And in, in the beginning, you're going to do everything wrong. And you're going to feel like you're not learning. And that's normal. But you want to record in your journal like you saw these things happening before the fact. It was amazing to see this pan out as I expected. And you're tricking your subconscious into thinking that you had that experience for real. It's positive self-talk. It's just like if you were having an anxiety attack. You're telling yourself, there's no reason to be afraid. There's no reason to be concerned. There is no emergency. There may have been something that triggered it. But the way you talk yourself down, you're feeding yourself positive reinforcements. These things that need to be positive in your journal. If you don't do that in your journal and you talk about how this sucks, another losing week, another losing day, I'm never going to get this crap. This is effing garbage. <laughs> Whatever the toxicity is that you feel like you want to put in there, don't. Replace it with something that you feel good about. Even if you have to find it in hindsight, that is going to be remembered by your subconscious. So when you're watching price action, your brain will see these things just like your car when you buy it. You're going down the road. You're not really looking for your car because you're in it. But then your eye jumps to, oh, I just bought this Jeep. It's got all the customizations. And this guy or this gal, Jesus just bought the same thing. Man, because you think you have the only one like it. Well, in reality, your journal is that very thing. It's the only one like it. It's the best trading book that was ever written. And you're the author. That's amazing. Because these things are going to be much more impactful to you. They're not going to be all that meaningful to someone else if they read it. But to you, it means a lot. This is your journey. This is what you've been you know, working and striving for. And it's full of the best cheerleading ever that is impactful and meaningful to you. So when you do your journaling and you annotate your charts, 
you record the observations that you're seeing in price action as if you saw it beforehand. And the way it works is that you see this and you study your journal on the weekends, look at price action moves in relationship to how the week closed and go back and look at your screenshots and what you were recording in your observations on that particular session, that particular day, and how it fits in the grand scheme of the entire week. And over time doing that, you're building pseudo experience that will feel like experience that's been acquired over years when you start looking at real-time price data. And you forecast over the tape what you think you should see in price. How should it behave? Should it find support at this level? Should it gravitate to this level? Should it not do a specific thing? How should it behave? The rules that I'm teaching you are those ideas, but you have to submit to them. But you also have to do the work of recording annotations in old moves, screenshot them, even if you weren't able to watch it live. But you record all that stuff real positive, like supporting your, your view on like you, you, like you were there. Like we're watching all this stuff real time here. You record, hey, I saw price action do this live and it was such a rewarding experience to see it pan out to script now you may not have had that very thing in mind when you were looking at it on your phone at work you had no idea what was happening but when you get home from work or you come home from school or you wake up because the market traded when you were sleeping then you record it like you did see it and it tricks your brain it gives you a head start in experience and you're filtering out all the negative things, which everybody does this in the beginning. They talk themselves out of doing this. They scare themselves. They talk themselves out of, oh, I'll never learn this stuff. It's too complicated. It's too hard. It's too many rules. How do I know when to do this? How do I know to do that? It seems like all these things are changing all the time. The goalpost is moving all the time. It's not. It's just you're trying to anticipate, well, not anticipate, you're trying to accelerate the learning curve when time is necessary and how much time is going to be unique to each one of you. But you have to give yourself permission to require whatever that time is and submit to it. So we have almost five handles from this volume and balance from here gravitating towards that 4119. See how we open on this candle and filled in that little gap to the body of that one. I'd want to see this candle or the next one run into that 4119. Down here we had a volume and balance. I mentioned real time. I talked about the fair value. Let me draw it so that way you can see the three that were there at the time. So that way you can get an idea what your journal should look like. Man, I wish I had this when I was coming up. This would have been such a huge help to me. I would have been looking at things a whole lot different. I would have been much more disciplined about what, how I studied. So you have volume and balance, fair value gap, and mean threshold at order block. There's your three PD arrays. Never breached any of that. So all of this here, every time you see the market trade above a short-term high, 
it's indicating what? Order flow is bullish. If it drops back down into any one of these discounted rays, you can accumulate a long position if, if you're not in the premium range of where you're targeting. But because you would be in a trade pipe cycle back here somewhere, you'd have to trade your position and manage it with this logic. I know some of you are going to be like, I'm using this. This, is, this makes perfect sense. I'm going to use this as my model. You're, you're going to get hurt because you're going to be trying to trade in the premium areas when we're getting ready to transition into lunch. And we're already rich in terms of a premium. And you're going to get retracements that run against liquidity. And there might be times like it does here. It pans out nicely. But usually, this time of day, you'll see it come back on the stops that haven't been traded to and punish the people that have been trying to profit going higher. Remember that mitigation block back here? Look how it reacted there. That's how you know who knows what. Yes. Now sell side has been raised to here. So from 41.13 to 18, that's five handles. Volume and balance from here to here. So high comes in at 18. Volume and balance. So you want to screenshot that. And like you can use my chart right here, for instance, as an example. Over here, you would annotate that the market has shown willingness to want to go higher towards the daily volume and balance, which is this shaded area up here. That's what this is up here pink shaded area and the old high at March 16th I'm sorry March 6th 2023 that's at this level is the 1950 level and you annotate that as you saw this coming we watched it live so you really aren't lying about that because you did see it because I told you to watch it and it delivered and offered five handles going towards a level that we were looking for 4119 for the 1950, that daily volume imbalance. And if it accelerates to the upside, go to your daily chart on ES and look at the February 16th of 2023. That is a SIBI, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. And you want to have that annotated on your chart using the low of February 15th and anchoring your rectangle to the high of February 17th and then extend that going into the future. That would be if we get above the volume imbalance that is formed on the date of February 17th and February 21st. That volume imbalance on the daily chart. If we get above that one, then we have that um, fair value gap. That's essentially the 16th of February on your daily chart for ES.
inches to see how we trade at 41.19.50 or above because this has been a long run up all one sided each day since Tuesday. So that's taking on an old daily high. So there might be a lot of reaction once we get above that. seems boring when you're going through it but when you look after the fact and see what's on the chart that we were looking at and annotating live it gives you a different perspective versus if you're just watching it and you're just very highly critical you're really not trying to learn you're just looking for something to complain about and say why didn't you do this and why didn't you do that instead of asking why I didn't do this and why I didn't do that reason with yourself and reflect on the things I've pointed out in the chart as it was happening because that's the, that's the things I'm drawing your attention to. The things you're going to ask me about, why you do this, why you do that, has no bearing on why I'm looking at price the way I am. So, because I didn't talk about it, means I'm not interested in it. If I'm not interested in it, I didn't use the logic that you're trying to figure it out of, something that had no, no bearing or basis as to why I think price is going to behave the way it did. I can't change the chart. I mean, you watch me paint it live, and we're still live here. There's not some cherry picked out after the fact Photoshop thing. It's I'm bringing your attention to the things that I see in price, how it should behave, how it should deliver. And over time, you'll be able to see your, like for instance, look at what we've been here. We got, we, now, what we have in our chart that I'm showing you. I mean, I got this oriented looking at that thinking that was a fair value cap. So, looking at this, let's take the south side and put it off for now. Looking at this, do you see a pattern? Do you see a setup? Do you see a model out of the things I've taught, which PV arrayed it, speaks most clearly to you? Looking at this right here, there's been several instances where price has been called the react a specific way and it has done so. What in this fractal of price action, that means this is the portion I'm showing you, that's a, that's a fractal. What in this delivery of price is your choice setup that you think is easy for you to spot, that makes sense to you? Not all of you are going to agree with everything I have here, but it's in the chart. I was watching this just like you are live. I don't have yesterday's uh, recorded video being shown to you right here. I'm doing this right now with a one-minute chart in front of all of you. What is in this chart that I annotated? What is it in here that is your model or closest to your model? Is it the fair value gap here? Is it the volume imbalance? Is it the inversion fair value gap here? Which we were looking for it to do what? Sell off and then the trade idea was no good because it did this candle close outside of the range so we talked about how we can mitigate the loss, make it smaller. I took you into NASDAQ and I showed you, okay, we use the six sister approach where we can now mitigate that actual loss that would have been realized by collapsing the trade because it was outside in the entry. So that would have been mitigation of the loss. And then we have this extended forward. If it was failing to go um, into a short here, what does it provide for us? Inversion. So it trades away, comes back down in, and does what? Offers support. Then it starts to gravitate higher. I mentioned that, okay, this puppy wanted to go to 41.19, 41.19.50, that daily volume imbalance. So our mindset shifted to looking for 
all the PV arrays that would support price going where we're seeing it reach to. So which one in here is meaningful to you? This is the part where mentorship is, is individual. It's uniquely your moment to decide what you're going to do in price because not every one of you are going to agree with everything I've mapped out here real time in the market. Just use this as a stair step. Each thing was being respected. Each thing was being delivered to and from. You're not going to agree on all of it. You're going to see certain things in here that some other students watching would say, I'm not interested in that. Or I would have traded this order block if it would have traded down to that and because it didn't I missed the move okay that's fine there's nothing wrong with that but what question was using what I've outlined here what would be the thing that you would gravitate to or where does your attention gravitate to using what I've outlined here is it something that you've seen repeat in your own observations and now you've watched it live be referred to in price delivery and now you've seen it pan out that encouragement that it comes from you seeing it doing it watching it submitting to tape reading where you're not pushing a button and you have all the upside advantages of not having any risk to worry about you don't have to be worrying about whether you're right or wrong you're learning how to read what price is doing. And over time, because you're able to do this and you're bored by it, that's the goal. You want to be bored. You know what it's likely to do. You don't really care if it works. You don't really care if it doesn't work. You're just going to stick to the rules because this is what you're supposed to be doing. That's the exercise. This is the regimen that you have to put yourself through for months. And once you submit to it long enough, You'll be able to see these things like I'm painting for you live and watching how price delivers from them, gravitating towards a logical level of liquidity or inefficiency. <clears throat> I remember when I was first learning how to do this and I was starting to just get the early stages of seeing some of these PV arrays not all of them they didn't come all at one time each one of them came at a different stage and time but I remember how it felt for me where I could see them forming and the excitement of knowing that I've seen this before and I can't wait to see it deliver like I expect. And I would get so euphoric. It'd be like a euphoric feeling come over me because I could see it. Pan like for instance, just the movement from this volume of balance here, from here, just to run above this high here. In the bond market, that was enough for a trade. $31.25 per tick. If you get 10 ticks, you know, that's over 300 bucks. That was more than I was earning at my job all week. Yeah. <laughs> so when I started seeing these PV arrays and expecting them to deliver as I would expect the your um, daily volume and balance you traded to there, it was a very monumental experience for me because I was always fearful that there was no way I was going to learn how to do this because it felt so complicated. It felt so out of reach in every book, in every course, in everything I paid money didn't do anything but add more things for me to sift through. And it was frustrating because I, I knew that I could beat this shit. I knew I could do it. I just got to stop looking at the stuff that was keeping me distracted from what's really going on and when I moved indicators I said that's it all these indicators all these settings what combination of indicators and what moving averages and all this other 
BS. When I say that, I'm stopping all that. I need to know what price is doing. And that way, if I'm only looking at each individual bar, which was open, high, low, and closed, not candlestick, because when I was younger, you know, I looked at it not as a candlestick. So it tore my eyes up, <laughs> straining it, looking at just a wick with a dash to the left and a dash to the right. No bodies. And when I got to the point where I could see one PD array, and it became a reoccurring thing, every day I'd go in, I'd look for it. I would look for it. I would look for it. Now, mind you, it was in hindsight, because I had to have a, a work, a jerk, a, a job. I drove a truck, and all my attention was focused on, I can't wait to go home and see what it's done. Because I had a quote track in my hand that literally was just giving me the data. Here's your 41.19.50, and that's pop above it. Come on, dig up in there. There we go. So you want to screenshot that. And that is nine handles, 10 handles. And you, well, it's kind of like what you're experiencing here today. You know, for some of you, I'm quite certain that this was a waste of time. I know, I know. You want to have something to be critical about. You want to see a button being pushed. You want to see, can I really trade? Can I do this and can I do that? If you're listening to me, I'm telling you what the price is going to do when it shouldn't do it. If you think I can't trade and be able to do this still, you just want signals. And I don't care what you think about me. You want to be able to copy me. Because if I wasn't able to do this, if I was unable to do it, if I wasn't accurate enough to see these things forming real time, you wouldn't be wasting your time watching me. You wouldn't be here. If this was not something that was repeating, that you could see that it was forming real time, and it was gravitating to where I'm drawing your attention to, you wouldn't even be watching my videos, but you keep coming back. So the people that say, I want to see you do this, and I want to see you do that, my retort is this. I want to see you debunk what I'm doing. Because this is all in front of all of you live. It's on a live stream. I have it on the lowest latency. That means it's as fast as YouTube can get it from my screen to yours. That's what you're seeing. It's real time. It's not delayed. I'm staying on one chart and I'm toggling inside this chart. I'm not showing another monitor. There's no extra uh, laptops being utilized and cherry picking this and cherry picking that. You can learn from me. And all I'm asking you to do is put some time into it. I promise you, you will improve. You won't have all these tug of war scenarios in your head about what is it you're doing? What am I waiting for? Deer in headlight scenario. I literally, I literally have sat back and watched my son do everything wrong this week. He reset his account, I think, four times already. Four. Four times. Because he's trying to do something that is against what I'm teaching you right here. He thinks he's going to do something different, which doesn't make any damn sense to me. But human nature being what it is, I have paid students that try to do that stuff and I don't understand it like I don't understand if I'm sitting here explaining to you what it's likely to do showing you where to focus and then it's reacting off of that the only thing that's different is when you see that it's trading down to that level and you anticipate a reaction going a different direction you push a button to buy it <laughs> like that's a hard thing to do it's not hard that's not hard what I'm doing here is hard because I could be wrong in front of all of you. And if I was a fraud, I wouldn't be able to do this. I wouldn't be able to be this consistent all the time, real time, every day. If the logic wasn't there, you wouldn't see these things panning out like this. If the market wasn't algorithmic, it wouldn't be doing these things, reacting exactly where I said it should react. Look at those volume imbalances. You don't see that in books. 
you don't spend more money now. They are because they took my stuff from mentorship and put it in Amazon books. But all that stuff's after. Their ISBN number and their uh, date of print is after my mentorship. 2016, 2017. That's when I put it in public hands. Behind a paywall, but now it's in everybody's hands on that YouTube channel. And you can see where all of your mentor really learned from. But can't do. It's easy to talk about what is that I've already put out there. And you can be an echo. But you're not teaching. You're repeating what I've said. And you're trying to change things to make it something unique to you. And you have no idea what the algorithm does. You're still busy trying to call it wake off. And it's not. So I'm not sure what you got from today. But I believe that if I were in your position and I was learning how to do this and I was a fledgling student of price action, I'd be looking for half of the daily volume and balance. So you would be at a range from high to low. 50% of that, that's consequent encroachment because volume imbalance is an inefficiency. So it's consequent encroachment when it's not an order block. And then we want to see if it wants to trade up to here. Okay, and then if it does that, uh, yeah, 41.25. And then what's the other range? Forty-one thirty and a half. You want to have that noted that would be the only other objective I think that could happen today but we've, we've moved a lot this week I mean we've really moved a lot and I think that uh, you know trying to chase it up at these levels would be not the smartest thing in the world so but getting back to what I was saying in closing I believe that what I covered today is paramount in a new trader or student of price actions development. I taught you how to anticipate difficult market conditions, still navigating it, how to utilize other markets to support the idea or negate an idea. I talked about how pushing yourself into a trade environment that you know, based on what I'm teaching, this that's low probability, which was that short earlier in the day back here okay I indicated it was low probability listen to the recording don't have selective hearing and block it out and try to you know come at it with an unrealistic critical stance I framed it with the logic that it was low probability and I said the hypothetical stop would be here now watch as soon as that candle closed outside of that fair value gap that was the first indication and then this candle opened and went above this candle's high right here this candle's high right there as soon as it did that done close the trade get out of it so i taught you how to abort a trade why when what does it look like you can use this with the 2022 model because that's what you're doing you're trading a fair value gap i told you that it didn't really take out this low here this is high probability i'm sorry high risk low probability condition and i was only leaning on what forex has already done and the dollar was indicating by itself is not enough. They all have to agree. They have to be in, in alignment. That's, that, that's a market that's symmetrical. So all things are agreeing. That's okay. We're going to close it. And I told you that when I was 20, when I saw these types of things here, my first indication would be to what? React to price. And how did I react as a 20-year-old to price? Open my stop up to a larger stop. Look at what it's done. No matter where I would have moved my stop, or if I removed the stop, which I did as a 20-year-old, I would be suffering through all this. And then finally, I had to puke my guts up because I couldn't hold on to the trade anymore. I've done that. If you don't learn this, you'll do this too. And it's avoidable. You have to have a rule-based idea. What's the protocol? What's the process that keeps you from doing that type of stuff? That's what you learned today. So thinking about that 2022 model where it's a... Shift in market structure, you get into a fair value gap. How do you know, ICT? How do you know if the trade's going to be good or if it's going to turn against you? 
I taught you that today. That's mentoring. I did it over live data, real time. Do I need to push a button to teach that logic? No. The logic was explained to you, real time. If I put a trade on, you're worrying about the numbers of how much I'm making or losing. Versus, is the logic really there? If it's not, you'll know. If this stuff doesn't pan out, if I don't know what I'm talking about, I'll look like a fool out here. And every time I'm out here, it's dancing to my drum. That stop was protected. The small loss was mitigated by taking us back over to NASDAQ and use the sick sister approach. That means when the market's starting, to move, let's go over there now real quick. Okay, the, the losing trade idea that was hypothetically discussed here at the 1050 time window. Let's go over to NASDAQ real quick. I appreciate you guys that are hanging out with me still. That means that you're probably going to be the ones that succeed. The ones that gave up the ghost and said, I ain't got no time with this. I gotta go somewhere else. They're never gonna make it. So the idea was we would look for this down close candle inside that range. And I remember if I said while we were here, before this range expanded on this candle, I said hypothetically we would use the opening price here, that would be your fill. And I said we'll give it even the worst case scenario and use this candle's high, which was eighty one I'm sorry, uh 184 and a half. Looking for a run above this here. So you could get your handles to mitigate the loss that you took, or I would have taken, and I would put me at square one plus some. So now I have a little bit of a cushion. Then I can go back to my market of choice, which is leading what? ES. Go back to ES. And our focus became all this. So it allows me to realign myself with a market that I now know it's likely to go up into this area where we've traded to. It wasn't both sides of the marketplace where I was unsure, you heard it. But when I was expecting certain things, go back and listen. Go back and listen and look at what I'm annotating on the chart. I'm taking your attention to very specific things, waiting for it to react this predefined rule-based idea. If we're above it, and we're trading down into it, what am I saying? I want to see it support it. It shouldn't go beyond that. Look at this candle's opening price. That's this one up here, okay? Upper left-hand corner, that O. Look at the opening price. I'm sorry, the, the closing price, rather. It's this one. Okay, that right there. What's that closing price? 4110.75. What's the low of this candle right here? That's this one, that's the figure right here, okay? What's the low of that candle? I'm not on the right candle, am I? Yeah, there we go. The low is 41.11. So it, at that closing price, 41.10.75, it was one tick above that, but didn't violate the volume imbalance at all. Reacted, traded higher. This was the other uh, PDR I said, here's the fair value gap, volume and balance, and then mean threshold of the order block. That's your. That's my three PD arrays. So those three PD arrays needed to do what? Go back and watch the time when I was watching those candles print. Price needs to be supported by that. We don't want to see a closing body below that because that would be a breach of three PD arrays and order flow would be shifting, no longer bullish for the near term. Did it do it? No. Market rallied above a short-term high here, runs above it, comes back down into the fair value gap. You can be a buyer in there, but not if we're this close to our target. You have to manage the trade. So that's the understanding of when do you take trades versus watching price in an open position? I'm using the PDRA matrix. When we're, when we're really rich in a premium in a long order flow that's bullish, you're not trying to add more to pyramid. You don't want to do that because you're already high up in that PD array matrix where it could retrace back to equilibrium and you don't want to be in that. That's the reason why I don't pyramid or add additional entry points once I get past equilibrium of the anticipated range. Meaning, let me show you what I mean by that. 
So we were looking for 41.19 and a half. That was that March 6th high, okay? And for the purposes of your learning here. Hope you guys appreciate this. Middle, center, March. It's not working, is it? Right. There we go. So that's the March 6th, 2023 high at level at 41.19 and a half. Down here, I extended this forward. We saw that it did not, not offer a shorting opportunity. So if it negates that idea, what does it become? An inversion fair value gap. So that means once it leaves, it comes back down in, you're looking to see if price is going to support it going higher or it supports price to go higher. It does. It starts to trade higher. So from here, that's the inception. Looking for it to go up here. Your FIB on that low to the objective that you think is where it's going to go to, which is that 41.19 and a half. This range, that's an implied dealing range. It has not yet materialized. Your analysis is implying that if this move occurs, if it delivers that move up there, at certain points within that range, there should be some measure of new reaccumulation, meaning Here's 75% of it, here's 50 and 25. So first quarter of the range between this low and that high is here. So we have an expansion there. So nothing really starts outside of what we've already seen here. Then it runs and then we have 50%. Isn't it interesting that we saw all of the consolidation, which is exactly what's in my core content lessons. Look at grading price swings. That's what I'm doing here. I'm doing this, but I'm not, I don't have the luxury of time to do all this explanation while these one minute candles are painting. So I annotate certain things knowing that I can come back and fill in and amplify your learning with all the things that I've already taught you in conjectured lessons that were in hindsight and never work in real time. No, with real logic that's in those lessons that I keep using constantly in front of you. If the logic is flawed, this stuff wouldn't work. If I'm a fraud, I couldn't do it in front of you. And I'm doing it live. Everybody asks for this forever. I didn't want to do it. No, I'm doing it. You got until the second week of November. If you waste the opportunity, it's on you. You wasted it. But the consolidation happens in, in equilibrium, which is this 50% level. Look how much it's spent time around here. Accumulating what? New longs that you have to manage as part of your open position that starts down here. Or maybe you did it on this Volume of balance down here. We went, we watched live too. Depends on what you know, where your entry would have been. You're going into this so that way you can record it and take these moments and add pseudo experience for your journaling. But the logic is the consolidation is mid midway between where you think it's going to go to. That's the target. So it consolidates at that fifty percent level. That's equilibrium and where it will consolidate. So you can anticipate longer periods of time distortion Ooh, what's that where the market just continuously moves sideways and every little pd array that would otherwise be utilized in other times like when the run is occurring you have to take away some of these candles okay take some of these candles away and just ignore them because every one of these candles are inside of the range from this high to that low so we don't need to see all of them what's the defining range high and low this high that low and that high. What is the PD array that should support price? Fair value gap. The bodies are supporting it. Did it close below it? No. Did any other body close below the low end of that fair value gap? No. So what is it suggesting? It's accumulating. What? New longs. So it's allowing smart money to accumulate their long positions in here and then we wait for the market to trade higher, displace, that means a short term high taken out, that's also qualifying and confirming that order flow is bullish. You don't need a DOM. You don't need book maps. You don't need heat maps. You don't need any kind of indicator stuff, something else to look at. Volume imbalance I noted, and then when we gapped with this opening price here, I said, this is another volume imbalance, watch that one. And then we opened here, I said, now we wanna see price support this. 
in rally. It's in the video, folks. Go back and listen to it. It'll be there, I promise. Then it rallies and accumulates more. Then we have a volume imbalance right in here. Look at the bodies. Look at the body. Extend forward. Look at the bodies. It's referring to that imbalance right there. See, you're looking at, oh, this is that classic support resistance stuff. It goes much deeper than that. It's not supply and demand, and it's not support and resistance. It's algorithmic price delivery. These little gaps, these little volume imbalances, you need to be aware of them because they can be your entry or they can be your target for partials or terminus. Whatever you feel that is your model, it's one little piece in that cog that's your model or that trading plan that you're in the process of developing for yourself that you uniquely trust and follow. It doesn't matter if anybody else agrees with it. It's what makes sense to you. And then at the final quarter percent up here, the order block I outlined, in my mind when I'm watching price, I'm thinking we're about the upper quarter percent. So that means it's going to be the biggest, quickest, sudden move in this area. And it's not likely to do what? Take sell stops. You don't want to anticipate in the upper portion, a move dropping down to take sell side. It's not going to do that because it's going to be in a hurry to get to the liquidity that would otherwise be pulled from the market. If it retraced, traders that might be short might be thinking, okay, I'm just going to get out there because it might come back and get my stop. That allows them to pull their stop loss above that March 6th high. They don't want to do that. So the algorithm is coded to allow for no deep retracements at the 25%, upper 25% mark. And you're seeing that run into the order block that does not out, doesn't go outside the order block body at all, or candle. Never went it went down into it. Yes, it accumulated more, and then straight shot right up into March sixth high. Find that in books. You won't. But you're gonna have all kinds of amplifications of this in mind. When my books hit the market. You're going to see all kinds of shit that you never thought you saw ever before. As precise, the logic behind it, all that stuff. And I'm doing you the best service in the world by proving it right here in front of you. This stuff works. It's scientific. It's technical science, baby. We do it like nobody else. And nobody else can come close. And I don't care who you talk about, who you mention, they're not going to come close to this. And this is the easy stuff. We have all kinds of stuff coming in red later in the year that's extremely precise. And I can't wait to share it. Can't wait to show it to you, Rely Charts. And I can't wait to see your excitement, the feedback, and the, well, shock and awe. Look at the body there. Look, see how it reacted off that volume of balance low? See that right there? The open there and immediately rejects. Where's sell side at? Below here and here. And a larger pool of liquidity resting right below here, which is also what? The old equilibrium of that implied dealing range. A dealing range that's implied is basically what you're trying to target. Everything that everybody else says, you can't try to predict the market. They say, your job is not to predict the market. It's to react to price. Did you see any reaction to price by me today? No. Except for, this is when we react and save a stop loss. But that wasn't an entry. That wasn't a mechanism that put you into a trade. It's for you to preserve capital, which is the first and foremost rule in this industry. Preserve capital. That's your number one job. If you don't do that, folks, your broker's not going to do it for you. Your spouse ain't going to do it for you. Your best buddy, ICT, can't do it. I might be in your head. You might think I'm in the room with you sometimes looking over your shoulder because I'll say something you're doing as a tweet. But I promise you, I can't reach your keyboard. I can't go into your phone. I can't execute for you. I can't manage your stop. You have to preserve capital. You have to keep risk in check. If you don't do that, you will, you'll be a victim to yourself. And if you're weak-minded, and I have weak-minded students, trust me, both paid students and unpaid in free public community, some of them are so weak-minded when they make their own errors, they love to be able to say it's my fault. That's a character flaw. You need to correct that. Be better. Because I'm out here proving this. I'm removing all of your excuses. I'm removing all the doubts whether this stuff is real or if it's rebranded anything else. And I'm literally sitting with you as 
if we were here live together in the same room, I can't make this chart be delivered to you faster than it is. You're seeing it as quick as it can get to you. I have the lowest latency setting on YouTube. So whatever delay there is, that's the lowest I can create for you. And I'm talking about things before they happen anyway. So it doesn't make a difference. There's no argument here. You can't make an argument against this. Not in hold water, no. You can say you don't like me. You can say, oh, but you didn't do a live trade. Okay, I can do that. But you're not learning from that. What you're trying to do is copy. I know. My paid students want that. And I denied them. And they paid me. So if I was ever going to do it, I was obligated to them. But when they signed up, they knew. They knew that there was no signal service. They knew it was all price action. They knew it was taught through the medium of a demo account. And when they failed, and some did, they have to own that. Because it's not because I didn't call the market beforehand for weeks, years, and months. Because I did, and it's all logged, and it's recorded, it's documented. I got the receipts for all that. They failed themselves. They quit. They didn't follow the rules. They didn't listen to the logic. They faded me. They did everything wrong as a student. Just like the student that goes to that Jade Master in the beginning. They think they know how to be taught. They know how to be trained. Teach me what I want to know. When you don't know what you need to know. So how are you going to go to somebody that knows what they're doing and demand they teach you what you think you should know? If you think you know what you should be doing and knowing then you don't need to be trained. You already know. So you're trying to be the teacher. And that's why he sends them home. You're not in the right state of mind to learn. And I've let people say stupid stuff about me for a long, long, long time. Last year, I said it's time to start showing what they don't know. And I'm bringing people. I have a, a gentleman I'm going to put an interview up tonight. I was going to do two interviews this week so that way I can be caught up and have them scheduled just to post to my channel during next week. But I don't I don't want to do anything. Like I don't want to contribute to any of this stuff during Passover. I, I want to completely stay away from all that. I want to honor it and basically abstain from all of that. But I have a lot of other individuals that want to be interviewed and they brought their receipts about what they've done with real money. But I have one that's going to go up tonight on the YouTube channel. I don't know what time it's going to be, but it'll be on there, I'm sure, before midnight, my local time. So get to it whenever you get to it. But I have people that have used what I've been teaching and they're making real money. I've never promised, I've never promised that you are going to be successful with real money. I guaranteed that you would read price better than anybody else could teach you. And you would know what price is going to do more times than not. That's not trading. That is a skill set that you have to be prepared to take on when you feel that you're ready to do so. And that can only happen when you're bored by being able to do things like this. When you can anticipate, not react to price. When you anticipate how it should behave. That's mastery of yourself because you're not just going in there reacting to price and chasing and buying and selling because it's moving around and you think it's going to move 10 more handles, but it's already moved 18. I did that. I did stuff just like that because I didn't know what I was looking for. And it took a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of prayer to get to where I'm at, where I can see these things. It didn't happen overnight. It was very, very hard. Nobody encouraged me. Well, me in the flesh, they didn't. And I didn't have this resource that you have. And I many times think to myself how if I could be a time traveler to go back and talk to myself, I talk to myself through these videos to you. I'm trying to, in my mind, bridge the gap of my ignorance as a young man who I really wanted to be like a Larry Williams. I wanted to be that. When I really didn't understand what he was, I just built him up as a, as a hero in my head, like some of you do with me, and that's wrong. I'm not a hero. 
I'm not somebody to try to mimic and copy. I'm just the conduit. I'm just simply lending something to you to improve who you are, how you're going to build with this information is up to you. But I want to see you succeed. I'm dying to see your success. I can't wait. To me, I celebrate it. But some of you are just rushing it, not realizing that you trying to rush it makes it longer. And it denies me the satisfaction of knowing that you found success. I know that what many of you are doing by trying to rush to a funded account before you're ready, trying to rush to trade with real money or trade with underfunding. That means trying to trade with too little. You need to have money. You need to have a little bit of skin in the race, okay? Because you can't do it with a $100 account. I'm sorry. You can't do it with a $500 account. I'm sorry. You have to be properly funded. And that means it might be a little bit longer for you. But I promise you this. You learn how to do what I'm showing you here. Prove that you have these analytical skills. You don't have to push any buttons. Let me run a scenario for you. Let's just say hypothetically that you are not allowed to trade. And we'll just leave that up for your own speculations. But let's just say you, yourself, are not allowed to trade. But you have a good friend that says, hey, you tell me what's going to happen right next to me while it's happening, and I'll just do what I need to do with an account. And then at the end of the month, I'll grease your palm. Now, this is all hypothetical. This is all just, you know, chit-chat. I'm not saying any of this ever happened or likely to ever happen with any of you. But you might not have any money. You might be in a situation where you have someone in your life that's trying to take something from you and you can't live a certain way. So you work out an arrangement. On the outward, you just look like anybody else. But you have this skill set that allows you to do something that the average person can't. And you have met someone, it may be a close friend, or you've built a business connection, a partnership, if you will. If I show you this, you do that, I get something as a gift. You figure out what I mean by that. Read between the lines. And you can acquire what it is that you're lacking right now. And then you can go into whatever you want to do. Read between the lines what I just said. You don't need money right now. You need the skill set. Because I promise you, if I said, I put an all points bulletin on all my social media, I said, okay, I am willing to make all this real time daily. And literally point to when it's the buy, when it's the sell, when it's the stop loss, when it's the target, where's the partials. If I was to make myself available to do that, I promise you, in the hour, I would have millions of dollars laid in my lap. I would have firms reaching out to me because they already have. They see what I'm doing and they know that nobody in their house does anything like this. They, they recognize it. I turn away so many partnerships and business arrangements, teaching clinics and circuits. I get it asked all the time. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in your success. I want you to supply to me for the rest of my days a wonderful testimonial email that I can read and share with my family that I have been such a blessing to you, such an encouragement to you. And I want to have that moment where I get welled up in my eyes and I, I appreciate that you spent time and told me you did this thing and you were successful and you endured because I was there. I went through it just like you are. And damn it, when it happens, it feels so good. It feels like you've arrived. You have a sense of purpose and you are encouraged for your future. Whereas right now, a lot of you probably aren't encouraged. You see this stuff and it feels hard. I know. 
I know. But I'm showing you. You have to show up. And you have to put the work in. You can't shortchange it. There's no shortcuts. There's no fast track. You got to go through it like this. And once you have that skill, it's like riding a bike. You don't lose it. You might not be able to do the BMX tricks like I did when I was 13 and 16 years old. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't even try to do that now. Fall off that damn thing and break a hip. <laughs> but this skill set, once you know it, there's a lot of people out there wanting to connect with people that can do this. And money is the easiest thing to get a hold of. The skill is the hardest thing to obtain. And some of you are rushing through this to try to get to the money. And that part is easy. You may not be funded enough right now. You may not have the capital to be able to do it right now. Focus on the skill. There's so many opportunities for you to be paired up with someone that does have the money. And that arrangement can be public or it could be private. It's your business. I'm not going to judge you. I know what I had to do when I was doing through some shit that I shouldn't have to deal with. But you can't even imagine the life that's possible with just a little bit of effort knowing this. When you watch these candles paint like this, to someone that doesn't know what we're doing, what the pursuit of even learning this skill set would yield, this seems like nonsense. Like, well, what's the point of this? But see, you know what you're doing. You're trying to build another income. So you know your needs. You have something that's, well, anchored in a need. You need to be able to do this. You can't imagine not doing it now. And you've subscribed to the idea that I'm going to put myself through this and I'm going to learn. And that's awesome. That's great. But there's going to be days where you're going to feel like you want to quit. And you got to lean on your journal. All the instances where you said, this is what I expected to see and it panned out. That's your encouragement. For some of you, you might be watching videos or listening to the Twitter spaces that I do that I don't think I'm going to be doing any more of. At least not live. One of the things I'm going to be doing next week is I'm going to be in a lot of prayer because I don't like how I talk. When I hear the recordings that other people share snippets of, I don't like that in me and I wish I could do away with it and I've been praying for it to just stop but I can't I, sometimes I just can't do it it's shameful sometimes how I talk when I go off the rails and it's not because I want to sound funny it might be funny it might be entertaining but it's, it's something I wish I didn't do and that's the part of me that I wish I didn't let out. Because you all knew me as the boring, monotone guy talking in the videos that are pre-recorded. But not realizing there's probably 15 different times where I'm going off. And I have to take that away. So that way you can focus on the things that matter most. The boring stuff. Not be entertained or maybe even distracted or turned off by something I might say with language that really isn't something I'm proud of. I'm not proud of it. So next week, I'm going to be in a lot of prayer and asking for more control. I do it all the time, but I'm really trying to pour myself into that next week. And that's what I'll be doing. So I don't want to be looking at anything on social media. I don't want to look at charts. I don't want to look at videos. I'm not talking to anybody, my students, none of them. No emails. Nothing. 
My family and I will be away. And just taking my time away from this stuff. And hopefully, when I come back the following week, I'll be recharged. I'll have a new spring in my step. And maybe the markets will be loosened up a little bit too. And we'll have new experiences to share with each other and new learning. One of the best things you can do for me is pray for me. It's very hard for me to wrestle with bipolarism. It's very hard for me to sometimes articulate what I want you to know and the imbalances that I feel chemically. And it makes it difficult. And when I don't have a filter, I'm not, I'm not the best mentor. I just, I fall victim to the imbalance at that moment and until it burns off, nothing, nothing can pull it back in. And that makes me a weak mentor. That's a, that's a flaw in me that I wish I could take away. And I can't. So I get it when there's people that don't like me. I understand. There's parts of me I don't like about myself. But you can't say these things don't work. You can't say that I don't know how to use them. And you can't say that I can't call this stuff before it happens. My private students have watched me for years do this stuff. And it was never, I was never obligated to do this for you publicly. I've never, never had any obligation at all to do this. And when I saw everybody out here creating their mentorships and not crediting the things I had to endure to get to where I'm in, understanding all this stuff, it's ignorant. It's like the people that dress up like soldiers and Marines and such, and it's stolen valor. You didn't go through the stuff that I had to go through to learn this. So... I'm going to shit all over your stuff by putting it out there for free and expose you as the fraud that you are. You mimicked and copied my stuff and endured no hardship at all. Maybe paid the payments to be the mentorship or found it in the Telegram channels like they were being circulated. So now, you can go right to my YouTube channel, right from the source, and get it right there from the tap. And you can come here and see it being used for real understanding why it's going to do it. They can't do that. They don't even know anything more except for what I've already said. And I have so much more to talk about every one of those PD arrays. It's offensive to see everybody out there chasing a dollar in clout and image. When if they just would have put their time and effort into it and say, you know what? I learned how to do this from this man appreciate him, and just ran with that. I wouldn't have a problem with that. There's a lot of people doing that. I don't have a problem with that. But you robbed me of the opportunity for me to give honor and glory to God because that's where it came from. And if you're an atheist and that offends you, hit the road. I don't care. You have me at a click to encourage you, to teach you. I had nothing. My own uncle, who got me interested initially, became adversarial to me when I started finding success with it. So who could I lean on? Nobody. So I sat there and I prayed and wept and prayed and wept let my relationships and my family connections dissolve. My health deteriorate. Almost burn a hole in the lining of my stomach from just constant acid because I couldn't eat or drink because everything was worrying about the fluctuations of these candles that were not candles then but just open high, low, and closed bars. 
and I had every hope and fear on every tick. While working, not having the chart in front of me, panicking because I'm inside of a, a destination fixing a, a soda machine or a coffee machine, and it's taking longer than I hoped. And I know that I gotta see what the price of soybeans are doing right now because if not, I'm gonna lose my ass. And you wanna take my stuff and rebrand it, you piece of shit. You don't deserve it. I'm here for the people that wanna learn genuinely and give me the courtesy to say, you know what? You didn't have to do this. I'm thankful you did. That's who I'm talking to, that's my audience. But I know there's a whole lot of fucking scribes out there writing down everything I'm going to say, and they're trying to put it into an Amazon book before I get mine out there. But your shit's going to be incomplete. Trust me. So anyway, I had to toss that in there because... I get one more twist of the knife before I hopefully come back better, stronger, faster. <laughs> but anyway, whether you observe Passover or not, try to rest next week. It ain't going to hurt you to take some time away from the marketplace. Rest. Don't look at some charts. Don't worry about watching my videos. You don't need to contribute to ad revenue for me. Just sit back and enjoy your family, the weather changing, just relax. Do something apart from trading. And then when we come back, each one of us will be in a prepared state of mind to receive, to learn, and fellowship. And I'll have some more lectures and things to teach you on the 11th. We'll be in a live session again on April 11th. It'll be a morning session again, so until I talk to you then, be safe.